Do we know where this, you got the remote in there? $1,600,000, Attention all authors. Page Publishing is looking for authors. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Page Publishing will get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, Apple iTunes, and other outlets. They handle all aspects of the publishing process for you. Printing, cover art, publicity, copyright, and editing. Call 800-501-3689 now for your free author submission kit. That's 800-501-3689 for your free author submission kit. Again, 800-501-3689. Overnight stock futures building on yesterday's Wall Street gains, as we hear now from business reporter Jessica Edinger. Good morning, Michael. Investors shook off coronavirus fears. Stocks coming off a record day. All-time highs for the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 index. The Dow was up 174 points. U.S. economic growth has been slowing for the past two years. A new CNBC survey of economists finds it might slow even more, down to 1% this quarter because of the coronavirus. That's well below the White House target of 3% growth. You're paying less at the pump. AAA says gas is down four cents a gallon over the past week to a national average of two dollars forty-three cents a gallon for a regular. You're still paying about sixteen cents a gallon more today than you were a year ago, and the Mega Millions jackpot is two hundred and two million dollars. All right, thanks to Jessica Edinger. I'm Michael Toscana. Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades and sell them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things, like buy a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of guys have already made the switch to Harry's, so thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cup, all for just three bucks, plus free shipping. Just go to harrys.com and enter 5522 at checkout. That's harrys.com, code 5522. This is Congressman Danny Davis. On March 17th, let's make history and elect Richard Borkin as the next clerk of the Circuit Court of Cook County. He is a compassionate lawyer, committed father to his son, and a product of the Inglewood community. He has never been afraid to take on institutional power. We did it for Harold. Now let's do it for Richard. Let's make history on March 17th. I ask you to vote for Richard Morgan as clerk of the Circuit Court of Cook County. Paid for by friends of Richard Boykin. Hey everybody, it's Melody Span Cooper. I'm here with an update on our trip to South Africa. There are only a few seats left. That's it. So if you're serious about going to South Africa with us, March 19th through the 29th, call Advantage International today at 312-856-1138. 
We're heading to Johannesburg in Cape Town for the International Jazz Festival. We'll visit museums and Mandela's home in Robben Island. There's so much to do and see in South Africa. And with only a few seats left, you should call Advantage International today at 312-856-1138 or visit WVON.com and click the South Africa banner for all the details. Our trip of a lifetime is powered by South African Tourism and South Africa Airways. I'm here in my apartment waiting for my wife to get here. She never gets home in time to see little man go to sleep. Her bus stop is a mile away. I get home first, so I stay awake till she comes in and says, Hey, the 2020 census is coming. I'm looking out for it. I've learned that every response counted for my community impacts our public funding is made from the year. That's education for our son and a closer bus stop for her. Hey, babe. Shape your future. Start here. Learn more at 2020census.gov. Paid for by U.S. Census Bureau. This February, we honor trailblazing Illinois African-American educators, such as Marva Collins, who have tirelessly empowered students by believing in their future and potential. Collins showed brilliance and commitment by using the classroom to create future citizens of the world. Great educators cultivate and influence scholars that help shape the direction of this great state. In honor of Marva Collins and all dedicated educators in Illinois, we salute you. Hi. I'm Spencer Leak Jr., Vice President of the Leak & Sons Funeral Home. I'm sure by now you've heard several celebrities on television speaking to the high price of funerals these days. Well, at Leak & Sons Funeral Home, that's simply not true. We at Leak & Sons can offer you a complete funeral service, including a casket, limousine, minister, organist, flowers, obituaries, and the use of our repast facilities for well under what those celebrities say a funeral might cost. There are several cemeteries in the Chicagoland area that are reasonably priced as well. So if you should ever need the services of a funeral director, don't just rely upon celebrities you'll never meet. Trust someone you already know. You can do it, we can Trust do it. Trust Leakin Sons, 7838 South Cottage Grove and 18400 South Pulaski in Country Club Hills, Illinois. Hey Alexa, play WVON 1690 AM. WVON 1690 AM station from iHeartRadio. Try it out for yourself. America is listening to WVON. It's oh, February. Is. That means Valentine's Day is fast approaching. And if your money is a little funny, WVON is there when you need us. It's time for our special Valentine's Day line. It's your chance to leave a message for the person you love. So the whole world will know it. And the best part is, it's free. Call WVON's love line at 773-336-3456. That's 773-336-3456. And leave your message in 30 seconds less then listen all day february 13th and the 14th for your message see it pays to listen to wvon this message is sealed with a kiss from the cola seafood 10754 southwestern avenue Come on, y'all. I'm missing like a whole break. I'm about to miss a whole. Let me try. Our daughter gets confused. Mm -hmm. 
about yeah. which details in a story are important. Which paper towels are most absorbent? Here are five product reviews. Why are you not getting me? See, I told you. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. Explore understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Brought to you by understood.org and the Ad Council. This traffic report is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance, where you only pay for what you need. Liberty Mutual Insurance, where you can customize... So you only pay for what you need. Liberty Mutual Insurance. WVON. Traffic and weather. Now. Over on the inbound Dan Ryan, there is extensive delays right now. Stop and go between 95th and 79th due to an earlier accident. You're looking at a ride time of just about 40 minutes. And then over on Tuskegee Airmen. <coughs> No major delays, Bishop Ward, no major delays. And then over on the Stevenson, traffic is moving when you get over to the Eisenhower. Inbound, we got stop and go between Central Park and Racine due to an accident, that right lane is blocked. And right now on Lakeshore Drive, traffic is moving freely. It's currently 26 degrees, mostly sunny and quiet today with highs in the low 30s tonight, down to 24. That's a look at traffic and weather. I'm Jennifer Thompson on 1690 AM WVON. The views expressed on our programs are not necessarily those of WVON, Midway Broadcasting Corporation, or our participants. Wake up, Chicago. Wake up, world. This is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, how you feeling this morning? Oh, I'm feeling all right, Maze. How about you? Man, I'm feeling a little bit rushed, so we're going to do this pretty quick. Hey, Todd, good to have you here. Got to say what's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom. Jennifer, how you feeling this morning? Okay, so I'm going to move right on, on to Miss Sonia Escobar. Sonia, how you feeling this morning? All right, all right. Well, let me tell you what. We have got a little bit of time, so let's get this soul plane up to 50,000 feet. We got to get get up, up, up and away. I'm going to jump straight into the headlines. Todd, we got the New Hampshire primaries today, man. Uh, I'm excited. You, you sound like our boy Walter. He's like, you know what? I'm happy. 
Right? Well, it is the new... Well, I, was, I was kidding about that. I, well, I'm going to tell you what. I'm glad for the New Hampshire primaries to be here. Uh, I think this is the, the, the last last step before the nail in Joe Biden's coffin. Right? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> what's next? South Carolina? South Carolina. If he don't win in South Carolina, it's a wrap for Joe. And you see old Mike Bloomberg is really waiting to take his spot. Yeah, that's Bloomberg. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting because, you know, you would think that more African Americans would be like, eh, just because he's spending money doesn't mean that I should vote for him. Uh, see, Todd, I think you have a very... I think you 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 know that's the like same thing you keep like how you be saying let's act like the stuff that Trump did ain't no good. I didn't say that. Ah, you uh, said that. What did I don't you think say? I ever said that. What did you say? It's I just said that he does a lot of things that are showy. So you name an aircraft carrier after somebody, you let somebody put prison and then you put them in jail. And then you say, oh, he's doing this. He helped the HBCU. And I said, yeah. He also cut Pell Grants by three point eight billion dollars. And so probably we just got to make sure that the undocumented immigrants don't take the. Let's make that the undocumented immigrants. But I'm still waiting to figure out, Todd, because I still am trying to get like I'm. You know, you were saying these little things. I think we started this like a week ago, and I'm still trying to figure out what are the Democratic base hits. I don't know. Ask somebody <laughs> who works for the Democrat. You are a Democrat, Todd. You know where I work? Where? <laughs> All right, well, look, let's get out. We got to go to uh, traffic and weather. Uh, we'll be back after that. It's Talk Chicago 1690. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up on the Talk of Chicago 1690 what? WVON. So what would you I, I got to explain what the Democrats told me. I, 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 told, I didn't even get to go to the DNC meetings. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you was the highest ranking mm -hmm. Democrat in the county? <laughs> yeah, who knew? <laughs> Everybody. I should have moved to New Orleans. Probably could have done better. I feel like if I was in any other city, I feel like if I was in any other city, I would probably be like the king. Right? Like, I feel like if you could take what you could do here and okay. go somewhere else, and it's like they'll be like, oh my God. No, you're right. This is a big, rich town. Your headphones mm -hmm. working? Yeah, they were. Cool. They're working fine. This is a big, rich town. Mm. Oh my goodness. I'm not a happy camper. You look happy. I'm not. Happy, happy, and you know it. There's something. Something. You're absolutely correct. I'll get you another step. WVON, traffic and weather. Fool around with this uh, laptop and not work. Oh, it's not. I mean, I'm just a, telling you, just spend the money to get it. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I don't like being late, and I hate that I get here early, like super early, and I got to be late because of somebody else. I hate that. I'm not going to front. I hate that. I don't think you're fooling anybody if you were trying to. Huh? I don't think you were going to be fooling anybody if you tried what? to. Everybody can tell that. Tell what? That you hate being late. I do, and I hate, like, it's like, man, I get up. I don't have a problem. I don't trip on nobody. Trip on nobody, but damn, it's like we do a show. It's like a fucking show. And it's like I, I, it's like I take my shit seriously every single day every single day and I don't like man I just don't that's not cool yeah I mean I understand it's, it's not but sometimes and it's like say something shit sometimes the lion gets you huh sometimes the lion gets you mm -hmm. playing that's why I put an hour and a half early in my shit every day every day every single day
You are tuned into the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd. All right, you know what? I got to speed through my headlines. Uh, did you see City Hall raise the red, black, and green flag yesterday? Yes, I mean, I didn't see it, but I heard. Okay, but it, I still want it on the outside. But shout out to City Hall. The, the red, black, and green flag was raised as it was put between two census banners. Now, I'm not going to be a hater. But what I am going to say is, I would. Uh, that's the start. We want our flag flowing outside in the wind so everybody down the street can see. Oh, it's inside? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, nah, we, we want the official 21 gun salute. I want the tourists to see it. I want the tourists to see it too, because I'm telling you, I was at the uh, Ferragamo store on Friday, and while I was at the store, I came out of the store and I looked up. And like right down the street was the flag blowing in the wind. So I went to go take a video of it, Todd. Uh-huh. And there were black people stopping like, look at that. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. And they were taking pictures, too. And so I think we just need to recognize how important it is for black folks. We want our flag outside. Um, uh, coronavirus watch. Yo, man. I know Corona. You know Corona? I, I know the Mexicans are saying to themselves, how the hell did we get into this? We got a perfectly good beer, and now y'all done named the virus after it, and now people are looking crazy. Do you think uh, coronavirus is causing uh, age, anti-Asian racism? No, people are just afraid. People are just <laughs> anti-Asian already, that racism was already here. No, they're anti-virus. They're just afraid of getting in contact with something. Well, you know, now I bet you in a very short amount of time, if you wear a mask, you're going to be accused of hurting someone's feelings. You're going to be calling, the masks are going to be triggered. And they're going to say, we should all just suck in the virus. I don't think so. To offend them. You know why I don't think so? Because they wear masks like all the time. Even when there's no virus running. Well, shoot, because they know they be having all them toxins. Okay, Um, that was racist. (laughs) (laughs) They do. Oh, so you're saying there's not, they have good environmental laws in in China? Have you seen them videos of them taking the mice, the live mice out of the basket and peeling them and making them look like shrimp? Okay, I've heard about it. I, the, I don't even try to tell I'm telling you. I, I, saw, I mean, that lady took live mice. It was a basket of live mice. She would stick her hand in there, pull one out, and carve it up. And by the time it was over, it looked like a perfect shrimp. Like, you would be like, ooh, give me that. I told you. That's why I need that Panda Express. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know that's commercial Chinese. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's like straight up American. American Chinese American. That's it. All right. Uh, how about this? Did you... Has anybody... Okay, so every day... When I go to the south side, I have to drive through the Jane Byrne interchange. I just want to point something out. Do you know that project started out as $535 million project uh, ten, years 10 years ago? Now it is up to $796 million. Do you? Did you all remember? Okay, can I tell you all something that people probably don't realize? Do you know who the most powerful lobbyist group in the, the most powerful organization in the state of Illinois is? Road builders? The road builders. The road builders are truly a cartel. It's funny. I met with them one time, and I told them they was a cartel, and they was like, oh, 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 oh. They knew it. I was like, don't nobody mess with the road builders because they straight gangsters, right? They control. But Ty, when they, you know, when they left out, when they saw Bruce Rauner was going out of office, you know what they did? What? They extended all their contracts past JB's lifetime. Mm-hmm. So what they, they right? Because they walked in and they said, okay. And then remember the money I actually told everybody vote for, but they put all of their money in a lockbox. So they're they're recession proof. Even if our state goes down the tank, cop cap down the down the tank, they still get their money. There's money for for the road, road builders. Yeah. It's all in a lockbox, protected by the constitution. Hey man, four hundred thirty-five million, and and I would love to know what is the black participation on that. You know. That started under, uh, from what people tell me, or what I've read in the past, that started under Thompson. He was very close with uh, Mr. Salini. Ah, Mr. Salini. Man, you know, we, see, you know, I'm going to stop. That was an Irish-Italian connection back in the day. Um, We need our own Bill Salini without being in trouble. Um, exactly. Uh, 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 let me see. Uh, will JB flip on Madigan, do you think? I was watching Durbin yesterday. What does that mean? Flip, like, will he kind of start to throw Speaker Madigan under the bus and assume the leadership of the party? Like, do you think that... Uh, oh, yes. Do you I, think I, JB I, I, is... It may not happen tomorrow, but it's closing in. I think JB is feeding the media. I think, like, the state police... I don't think the state police 
I don't think the state police raid the Capitol and raid the Speaker's office without the head of the state police being like, hey, uh, Gov, yo, it, you, you really want me going to, you know you got this search warrant right here to go into Speaker Madigan's office. Should we really do that? Yeah, you go because we'll make another headline. No, no, he, there's no way he can say no. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, after those three legislative inspector generals said that no matter what you do, no matter what crimes you report, they all go back to them and they bury them. I, man, I think JB is going to throw Speaker Madigan under the bus. D uh, Dick Durbin got very close yesterday. Very, very close. They kept pressing him. They were like, there's a lot going on. And he was like, I work with the Speaker, but... And then, and let me tell you the other thing, y'all. Eventually, someone, and I should say someone, because they're, they're going to do it as a, a progressive group. A team. Yeah. They're going to say that he can't be the head of the state party. He can be a speaker, but how can he do that anymore? Yeah, I think it's coming. I think it's closing in um, very shortly. Uh, Girl Scout cookies. Best, I, man, best come up ever. Girl Scout cookies are now going to be sold, tied in front of cannabis dispensaries. Now, I'm going to tell you what. Working. Basic shoot, you're gonna take your bucket and stand outside and everybody who got munchies gonna come see you. <laughs> shoot, what are you talking about? This is real simple. This this is about as simple as it gets, Todd. You know, Girl Scout cookies, cannabis, you know, you know the the, the fam most famous brand of cannabis right now is Girl Scout cookies. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's like a it's Girl Scout cookies is like the famous brand of uh cannabis right now, according to my cousin. Yeah. Snoop Dogg said the same thing too, but he told me that two years was that two years ago well, we interviewed him or a year ago. I know it's true. Uh, like a year and a half ago when we interviewed Snoop, he was like, "Cookie, you know my cousin went out on the balcony with me, huh?" I was like, "Dang, my cousin is so lucky." It's like my cousin was saying, "Like, dang, with Snoop, my cousin came back on the thing." Like, I was like, "Cuz, what's wrong with your eyes?" He was like, "Hey, man, Snoop asked you to come smoke. What you supposed to do?" Next thing you know, he'll be out there with Marcus. Oh, but he was actually, while he was out there, he, my cousin said he showed him some pictures of the cannabis cookies Marcus still was making for Snoop. Mm -hmm. Crazy, right? Um, how about this one? Another, so I, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. But did you see that uh, one of the Supreme Court justices just decided to resign and go work for Larry Rogers firm? Go Bears! So how about this? While the black folks are busy cannibalizing themselves, right? While the black folks are fighting, while we got three black candidates racing for one black spot that's right. going to open up the door for the white people to take it, the, the white folks calmly resigned. The white judge, the Supreme Court judge, you know what he did? He went to go work at a law firm and make multiple millions of dollars of while the, they transitioned his, but there was no fight. Guess what? Ann Burke decided that she was going to appoint another Burke to the Supreme Court. What's his name? Oh, uh, uh, anyway, so Ann Burke appointed another Burke to the Supreme Court. While we're fighting and we're about to lose our spot, they just said, hey, yo, you step out. We're going to get you a big, powerful job downtown, and then we'll put our guy in. Yeah, but he's got to be a Republican. It, guess what? Right. He's white. The, like uh -huh. we're the only people. Here's the thing that I. Here's the thing. He's Dup and DuPage. Just so we're clear, DuPage flipped last election yeah. to Democrat. So there is an argument. But all I'm saying is, do you think that when the white folks come to their family dinner, they be like, "Are you a Republican or a Democrat?" They be like, "Family, can we get all of these punks?" Hmm. That's all I'm saying. And so while we're watching the black people destroy our shot at the Supreme Court race, we just watched in the same. Within the same window, the white transition of power where they make money and somebody keeps the spot. And guess what? Can you imagine that Supreme Court justice showing up back in court where he, with all the people that he probably appointed on the way up? He's not losing no cases. See how that works, black folks? Man, he's not going anywhere. He, he's, he'll, he's a rain maker. Now, exactly. It's the Talk Chicago 1690. We'll be back. The station, 1690 AM. See, that's gangster shit. Meanwhile, we doing goofy shit. And can I tell you something? Even if they're not related as Burks, which they're going to tell us, they're going to say, we're not related. They related. <laughs> it's freaking hot in here. 
got a turtleneck on. I mean, you had a thing on. I, I didn't wear a t-shirt, else I would take this off. I don't have a t-shirt unless y'all want me to be in my um tank top, in my Dago. Oh, my goodness. My Dago tee, we used to be able to call them Dago tees. Then they went to wife beaters. Yeah. Now you call any of that, and it's like, I'm going to get a Me Too. Unless I get it referred to the legislative inspector general, which which point I can have it killed. <laughs> Y'all take a moment to share the broadcast. Todd, you have the camera. You talking about this? Hello, followers of Bay Shackle. Do we have any t shirts here? Uh, uh. Yeah, Boy, that was a good yarn. Right? Yeah. I'm trying to remember. What am I trying to do? <laughs> Gotta go shopping today. I should write a list. I'll probably be hungry, which means I'll try to overshop. I also got to figure out what will be the black fact of the day. I knew what it was yesterday and I forgot. I need a memo pad on my phone. Funny, man, he's talking about sticking together. But he's actually right. Uh, we're gonna stick together about something. You know what? If everybody, I mean, I shouldn't say everybody. If a group wants to go vote Republican and be in the Republican Party, I got no problem with it. Except, why complain at all? If you go in the party and you, you don't get to be a true part, part of it, you're just another cog. Another cog in the white wheel. Basically. Cog yeah. in the white wheel of power. Yeah. You, my friends, are not expected to do anything but grin and take it. Okay, guys, today we're going to have some fun. I want to encourage everybody to go to iTunes and download the Posterized app. Download the Posterized app for our 8 o'clock segment. Because what we're going to do is name the all-time starting five for Chicago basketball. Right? Like, who are the five? Man, And when I was looking at all the basketball, it's an app. And it has all the players that came from Chicago. Like oh, high school legends, anywhere. yeah. Like high school, back college, whatever, and say so give you Chicago's all-time starting five. So right now on my list, because it gets kind of hairy. Yeah, I can tell. I mean, I can guess. I got so D Rose, D Wade, and Isaiah Thomas as my guards. Uh -huh. Right. I got Ben Wilson and Mark Aguirre right now as forwards. I got Jawan Howard and Anthony Davis. As centers. But I'm sitting here looking at that list, man. They don't have Kevin Garnett on there. So I would have probably put him as my oh, center. Oh, he'd be there anyway. Right. But the, it's pretty cool list. Like, you, you sit there and you're like, damn, would you take Doc Rivers? Would you take, right? Like, oh, yeah. it's I really. So if you get a chance, go to Posterize, the app, download it, because they're going to announce the Chicago starting five for All-Star Weekend. This is really high school. High school, uh, uh, it's high school all the way through college, all the way through the pros, cause it like people made it to the pros too. But are there right. people that played in college, high school that you know they never made it to pros, but they was the best, right? Like some people might say, like a Ronnie Fields, or you know, yeah, I'm just. But it all starts in high school. It's you're right. About high school, really. The high school legends. Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting. Mm 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 mm. Spinsburg. 
the weight. It feels like springtime in the winter. Christmas in June Now every time I close my eyes I thank my Lord that I got you I got and you got me too Every time I click of you, that puts myself cause I don't believe it's true. Yeah. Cause someone like you loves me too. Yeah. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd, it's time for the social media question of the day. You ready? Ah, ready. Well, let me back up. I got a couple things I want to say. First of all, don't forget you all. Ah, did you call and leave your love less love message for Janine? Because right. it's that time of year ago where you can express express your love for that someone special in your life. Call the WBON love line at 773-336-3456. That's 773-336-3456. And leave a short message for your sweetie. Listen February 13th and 14th for your special love message that's brought to you by Dakotas. That's Dakota Seafood, 10754 Southwestern, where people, the parking lot stays full because everybody is always eating in the parking lot. They don't even want to take it. <laughs> now, Sonya, you better stop it. So I'm you better stop it. I don't know if that's sad or if that's really cool. That's for, actually, what it is is really a lie. <laughs> it's really a lie because Sonya is the human drink magnet. Um, all of look, I mean, you know, when we put Sonya, you know, on Facebook Live, Sonya gets her little break interlude solos, and every time she do her break solo interludes, it'd be somebody be like, "Is that be her hair blowing like Beyonce? She is so fine." I was just thinking, and then she'd be like, "Oh, who me?" Who hey, me? <laughs> who me? Hey, y'all! It is the Talk of Chicago sixteen ninety. Um, well, I'm sure Janine will listen to my message when I put it on. Uh, well, she's got to hear it because they got to play it back. Man, you know, Ty's going to be this move. I'm going to be like, hey, man. This is your man, Maze Jackson, with my sneeze. R&B voice, and I just want to tell you, I was thinking about you late last night. This is like one of those songs in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Right, we were like boys to me. I was really thinking of boys oh, to me. Yeah, that's true. Right. <laughs> baby, you know, like when they be like, they talk in the middle of the song, I'll be baby. See, I could do it like when I get the microphone, no, I can get on the phone, it could be monkey. Ooh, baby. I'm going to pay somebody, like uh, Richard Dent with a deep voice, to say that he's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that ain't your next thing you know. Richard, don't you know how you can't do that? Richard Dent be knocking on your door, like, hey, you like that message? You, know, you better get your uh, vibe. And Richard Dent is a big boy. I let me jack Richard Dent up. Yeah, he, is. Uh, he is a big boy. Um, all right, time. Time for the social media question today. I, I, you know. Oh, also, can I? Re you know, today we're going to be talking to Kara Bachman. She is from the uh, Sh Chicago Sport. What? She's from the Chicago Sports Commission. Mm -hmm. But before we talk to her, because she's going to be telling us about all of this stuff that's happening for the NBA. But before we talk to her, I want to encourage everybody to go download the Posterized app. Todd. The posterized app is on the iStore and Google Play Store. But Todd, today at eight o'clock, we are going to pick the top, the start, the top starting five lineup of all Chicago basketball players. Like, like I was looking. If you go to the app, Todd, because they're going to announce it during all NBA All Star Weekend, right. and what we don't want is all these people from out of state voting on who's the best Chicago players. So we got to go get the app and download it or whatever. But I'm telling you, Todd, that's going to be fun. Eight o'clock, we're going to do that. Have a little fun. Okay, but now we're not because we're going to talk about the social media question today. Todd, do you watch Netflix? Oh yeah. You know everyone's I was listening to Cheers this morning. Listening to Cheers on Netflix this morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, well let me tell you what. Um, I, I this new character Frazier just came on. <laughs> I mean, I like you know what I like Cheers and Frazier, but you know what I also like um, 
Do you watch Larry, Curb, Your, Curb, Enthousi- Curb Your Enthusiasm? Larry David? No. I watch. Did you watch that, Seinfeld? That Paul Reiser show that just started. I like that too. Well, maybe that's that's old. That's old with him and Helen Hunt. Oops. No. No, no. That's, uh, yeah, you're right. That's Paul Rudd, I'm thinking of. Paul Rudd. Okay, well, let me tell you what. You gotta watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. And I'm on a squirrel trip right now. So is this new? Now? No, this is the 10th season. But it is, it is Seinfeld with cursing and black people. No, no, I mean, like, it, 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 it's, it's, it's been 10 seasons. Really? Yep. Oh, uh, All right. Well, let me do this. Let me. Uh, so I was talking about Netflix, though. And yeah. on Netflix, every once in a while, I get this alert. And when I get this alert, it tells me things that I might be interested in watching. And I got an alert that said, uh, and it was talking about uh, Malcolm X. And there is a new documentary about the death of Malcolm X. And they are suggesting that the people who killed Malcolm X were not, the people who were arrested and prosecuted for killing Malcolm X were not the people. They were actually innocent. And that the, the shotgunner, the person who actually walked up to the stage, pulled the shotgun and murdered Malcolm X mm-hmm. directly, was a well-known local activist in Newark, New Jersey. And people knew he killed Malcolm X. It was a well-known fact. Now, Todd, I guess, or not a well-known fact, but like a, a well-known secret, you know, like the worst kept secret ever. Yeah. So I guess my question is now, with everything that we know and the ability to investigate, New York City is considering opening up, reinvestigating the Malcolm X, the death of Malcolm X. And I want to ask the question, the social media question of the day. Should the death of Malcolm X be reinvestigated? Should the death of Malcolm X be reinvestigated? Now, Todd, um, part of me says yes, because I think we want to know the truth. But part of me says no, because I think they will use it you know what the first thing that jumped out of that article to me was? What? You know what they did? They said, they said, uh, Farrakhan said that Malcolm X was worthy of death. Uh, in, the, in the current article. Right? So they didn't say very many quotes or anything, but they did make sure that they mentioned that the minister said that Malcolm X should die. Now, I first of all, to all of my Nation of Islam people, I'm not, I don't want no problems, I ain't tripping on nobody, etc. But when I think about this, Todd, and I think about the nefarious way that people operate, do you think that the reinvestigation of Malcolm X could be used to tarnish or to further split black people? See, I, I feel like this reinvestigation, like if you let sleeping dogs lie, and they said they couldn't understand why nobody cared when the murderers were in plain sight. They actually tried to implicate, in some cases, members of the Nation of Islam. Now, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to be honest. We need Salim to call in, too. Because Salim, you know, Salim had shed some light on this. But do we really want the death of Malcolm X Reinvestigated. Give us a call. 312-374-8130. And, and what happens if the outcome further damages our community? Todd, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I saw a movie on this uh, at uh, Crow uh, a couple of years ago. But unfortunately, my memory is not as good as it used to be. But uh, it seems like there was... When you said Crow... Uh, the Coalition for the Remembrance of Elijah Muhammad. Shout out Mandine Muhammad as well as uh, Munir Muhammad who produced that, who kept that legacy for so long. Go ahead. Yeah, um, but it, it seemed like it was, if I remember correctly, there was uh, from that documentary, there was a connection to the government and they had some ideas of who killers really were. And did they say that the killers came from inside or outside? Inside. So even the nation was suggesting that the killings came from inside? Yes. People who were connected. But they also had a connection to, to the outside government. 
Now, were they infiltrators and operators? Uh, like, were they infiltrators or were, like, the government aid? You know how, like, COINTELPRO took over? Uh, not took over, but corrupted the uh, Black Panthers? Was it the same thing? Oh, man. You don't know. You don't yeah, know. you're working my memory. memory. And it just you sound like my cousin, man. <laughs> like my cousin. But cookie <laughs> <laughs> Let me go to Mr. Cliff. Mr. Cliff, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. Should we reinvestigate the death of Malcolm X? Take the word of an OG, the answer is yes. That bomb went off in the back of the stadium, and everybody turned to look, and the gunman ran to the front of the stage and supposedly shot him. But the autopsy showed that he was shot in the top of the head. Not only that, but two days before that, the federal government had rented that place for whatever reason, we don't know. And here's the next thing. Malcolm called Dick Gregory and said, I want you to come down tonight. And Dick Gregory said, Malcolm, I'm not coming because they're killing you tonight. Hmm. Wait, what? I said he wanted Adam Clayton Powell and Dick Gregory to come and see him. Okay, mm -hmm. and Dick Gregory said, I done bought me an airplane ticket to Chicago because they're killing you tonight, and I'm not going to let them get two for one. Hmm. Wait, wait, now, Mr. Cliff, where did you get that part? I didn't know that. <laughs> I know you didn't. That's what it is. That's what happened when you're an OG. And listen, while they investigating uh, the killing of Malcolm, they need to investigate the killing of Sam Cooke. Oh, man, I saw that. Didn't Netflix be having you want to know what happened to everybody? Hey, Mr. Cliff, this is Top Chicago 1690. We'll be back after traffic and the weather. More of The Morning Show with Vance hey, Jackson coming up. Did you watch the Sammy Davis, I mean, the, the Sam Cooke documentary? No, but The I two guess murders I, of Sammy, of uh, Sam, Sam Cooke? I guess I should, huh? That was really good. Mace, they rewrote this. If we can get in before, like, 7.30. Knock it out. Please. Who rewrote it? comes to me so they gotta um i agree they gotta get their shit organized i, I i'm happy to be on the team Maze, i'm right there with you you know it's like when we're reading it we see it and we're like this shit don't sound right and you know it takes me a long time to read all these big words those are big words jesus christ you went to bolenbrook no right. problem. What the University of Illinois words. Yes, even big I went there too. <laughs> Did anybody watch um, yeah. this this documentary? Did you watch that the one that won the Oscar? It was, was so the hair? No. it was so cute. I mean, I watched it. It's short too, right? It's only six it's hours, six yeah. minutes and forty. And he's from Chicago, and it was a um, he's from Chicago, and it was a Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. So he got donations to do it. But when I, I tell you, what, when he did it, it looked so good. It was so, it was like I was watching it yesterday morning, sitting here because I had done my rundown. And I just said, and I was just like, like, oh, now it, I mean, they didn't get, and you know, they turned that into the biggest Oscar in the world. It was six uh, six minutes and forty eight seconds, but they have the Oscars like we ain't got no black people, so right, we about to make this the biggest award in the history of awards. Yes, exactly right. They had to pump that one. Pump it, pump, 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 pump it, pump, 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 pump it. Man, what does it when you know they about to kill you? Yeah, what? When your homie call you and say I ain't coming because they killing you tonight, that's kind of deep, man. Oh, man. Todd, you and Sonya have the camera. I can. Uh, I understand that 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 uh, documentary, 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 documentary. Yeah, I got that out. I can understand that documentary very well. I would take Claire to preschool, and I would uh, do her hair, and boy, Janine would be all like, "Hmm, yeah." 
I thought I did a fairly good job myself. But you know, after a while, after you, you're the, an adult says, hey, that's not quite right. And then the child's like, mm, I'll just wait. Or, or I'll figure it out myself. So. That hair stuff again, is no joke. It's real work. I need to get the, uh, yeah, oh shoot, later, get the African American thing, I need to get that, who was I thinking about? I was saying, I used to do Claire's hair when I was taking her to preschool. I used to do Milan's hair when I would take her to preschool too, my and everybody would be hair. like, oh my God, that's exactly what did you do to her? Yeah, and I'm like, man, that's pretty good. So let me ask a question. Turn around and look at that girl. Is that a distraction? What? Look at her. What? Look at her nose. There's something in it? On it. I mean, like, guess what I really meant. It's like an earring in it? No. It's a mole. Is oh. that a distraction? Uh, I would be staring at that the whole time. Not to me, because I can't really notice it. Yeah, if you saw it. Okay. Look at how when I swear You are tuned in to Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Got my co-host, Toy Children. Who was that, like, Surface? No. Who was it, like, All for One? No, they, they, they make those corny songs that, that Janine's like, oh, that is just too corny. You know what? I'm starting to like this, Janine. It's like Todd and so you believe she exists. <laughs> right. It's like, I just haven't seen her. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, but I'm going to tell you what. This is, um... This this is a one of those songs where it's like you find yourself singing it even though you don't supposed to like it because you're like these are cornball right all right y'all and it's like these are all like fake new edition knockoffs to me like all the boy bands became new were like new edition and then it's like new edition is probably like dang can I tell you about the time I saw new edition in the airport and they was all sitting on well not all of them Michael Bivens BBD was straight. Ralph was looking busted. He had on the clothes from the night before, and his plane had got delayed. And I was like, you ain't even got no United Club? Yeah, exactly. All right, dog, you ain't put your change. Come on, man. What are you doing here with? Right, what you doing? Well, first of all, no, 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 no. I was like, you should come with us. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you were going to United Club. <laughs> no, you should come with us, dude. Yeah. All right, y'all. Talk to Chicago 1690 asking the social media question of the day. Should the death of Malcolm X be reinvestigated? Give me a call. 312-374-8130. We have so many of our elders who were around during it. You know, I hear the stories of the shining black prince um, and the stories. But Todd, is the, is the death of Malcolm X something that we want reinvestigated? You know, Mr. Cliff said that they that Dick Gregory told him he was going to die that night, so he was going the opposite direction. Todd, if you knew your friend was going to die that night, would you go the opposite direction, or would you be there to make sure he's straight? Well, you call I'm a warned him. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a soldier. soldier. I don't know if there's much I can do after telling him, man, don't go. You can say, duck! Watch out! You can tackle the, the shotgun. Yeah. I, I learned. Did I tell you my story? I told, told you this story. No, you didn't. Yes, yes, I did. I, I remember the shower story. <laughs> I'm going to my room 
this is my first year at Xavier. I got two roommates, uh, both from California. They went to school together. Were they Bloods or Crips? Nothing. They were just Catholics. Okay. So <laughs> next door was a guy from uh, Ignatius who was a couple of years behind me. Mm -hmm. And on the second floor was a guy who was a, from Ignatius with a year behind me. So I'm just, you know, strolling on, boop, 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 I see the guy who was one year behind me at the door, knocking on the door. No, he didn't knock it. He just standing in the hallway and said, hey, what's up, man? What's going on? Yeah, right, right. We got that guy. And then he says, yeah, okay, I'll see you later. And he walks over the door, and he knocks on it. And I don't know why I'm still standing there, but I'm still standing. The door opens. The other guy from Ignatius, they start talking. Gack, 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 gack. Yeah. <laughs> I know how that starts. And I jumped in between, and the next thing I know, I'm sliding down the hallway. <laughs> and then one of the California guys comes out, runs, and he breaks up the fight because he's a much bigger man than me. I didn't even know they fought at Ignatius. Was it like a windmill fest? I, I, like, how do I know? Oh, because you was busy getting out. <laughs> That's what I knew that I was not the guy to break up fights. Mm, yeah, I always say, I always tell my friends in a fight, don't hold me, hold him. Exactly. Right. They be like, come on, dog. You, I used to always have it. Somebody come grab me, and then I get stolen, and then I'm right. mad at everybody. Right. All right, Mike, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. Do we want the death of Malcolm X reinvestigated? It would be depending on who's doing the investigation, but all the killers are said to have been uh, deceased except the one who's still alive. So who would benefit from the investigation except to use what you find to perhaps maybe embarrass uh, Minister Farrakhan? See, and that, see, thanks, Mike. And that, is that Mike Brown? Hey, y'all, if that's Mike Brown, y'all better get y'all concealed carry license. I'm just telling y'all, Mike got a banging class. Um, see, I, I think that if we open this can of worms, so, so Todd, what happens when you get out of line with your organization? And it's like something, like, can you become bigger than your organization? Um, yes, you can, actually. How does that work? Like, like when, when you, you become, become bigger, your, your presence and your message is probably, well, first you have to be charismatic. Okay. So you, you have a uh, charismatic nature, and the message that you're giving people respond to just better than they respond to anything else uh, in the group. You know what? And you know what, I, you know what the book says? The good not, book? Not the good book. Yeah. The bad book. Well, for me, it's the good book. It's called The 48 Laws of Power. Oh, yeah. In that book, it says, rule number one, never outshine the master. Um, I think in our world, Malcolm X might have been the master, but in the nation, the minister, I mean, not the minister, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was the master. And I think um, oftentimes, externally, people might raise you up, but you always got to remember where you came from. Yes, you do remember where you came from, but you cannot... You cannot dictate how the public perceives you. I, it, it doesn't matter how the, per, the public perceives you as long as you make sure that you manage the perceptions. Now, there is jealousy, and there can happen as people start to elevate. But I think um, one of the things that I think is, you know, I, and as, I, as we create organizations, and you start and everybody's on the same page, inevitably somebody thinks they're smarter than, than the person. Who bought it and, they, and people start pumping them up and they create these fissures. I don't know if I want to know about the complete death of Malcolm X because I think it may create an opportunity to smear what's going on currently. Hey y'all, stop Chicago 1690. When we come back, Ty, who has clout in Chicago? Seems like the people who used to have clout don't have clout, but I want to know how do you get clout in Chicago, especially in City Hall. Stop Chicago 1690. We'll be back. The B talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation. How? M -m 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 money. No, nah, because some black people with money ain't got no clout no more. Well, there's only going to be so many people. I just saw one error. Hmm? I just saw one error. One error. Right. Okay. Okay. Is that the same one you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here, come on. I'm going to do this now. Todd, you and Sonya have the cameras. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I know who I wanted to do. He's somebody we all know, but I think it's interesting. All right. Let me look him up and see what I can get on him. 
I actually saw a documentary about him while I was in Cincinnati. Uh, yeah, I didn't spell that right. I hate that. I didn't spell something right. That, you know when people don't like you. Because you'll make a small mistake, like spell something wrong on Facebook, and it becomes a thing for them. Like, you know, you got some word wrong. don't like to do three words about a guy. People have realized they deserve at least a minute. Came up with a better idea. Get better idea if I knew what else. Saint Ignatius yeah. people hit me up like, "Are you throwing shade at Saint Ignatius because we were throwing windmills?" What's that? Fighting with no fights. <laughs> there were a lot of fights that I remember. Right, that's what I said. I didn't know it. Saint Ignatius they fought. There were a few fights, but no. No. and the danger. <laughs> was the Malcolm X documentary good? I was watching it. I didn't keep going. I stopped because I was like, 
I didn't know what was going to happen. All right, also, remind you all, tonight is the What's in for the Black People meeting. Uh, 7 o'clock, 2907 South Wabash. There will be food. Man, last night me and Carrie were like I got home a little late and so we sat down and we were like we were gonna watch Harriet and just the opening of it, we was just like both of us looked at each other and said, Do you really, really wanna watch this? And we both turned it off. We said no. Do you wanna see any more slavery stuff? No, nah, man, it just was like as it opened it was just like, golly, I ain't I don't even wanna do it. I'm I it's like I wanna see a black person win, but golly, I just, uh, I ain't got really, it. From, from what I hear, that's been a complaint about these films about slavery. It's really not enough of... Uh, black wins. No, not enough brutality in it. It's sugar-coating slavery. Too much. Man, tw 10 years of slave did not. 12 years of slave, that right. didn't. Uh -huh. When they busted old boy's teeth out with that chisel and forced them to eat, oh, <laughs> Did you see that? I didn't see that. Oh, they took a chisel and chiseled his teeth out while his mouth was open. And like literally. And then stuck the thing down his mouth and forced him to eat. Yeah, they did some terrible things. Something, Something happened along the way. Yesterday was a bit Something happens along the way. And yesterday was all we had. Oh, after the love is gone, we took the Whoa, after the love is gone. No NBA banner. Oh, uh, oh, yes, it is. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 16, 9 a.m. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Torch Stroger. Ty, I got to say what's up to the rest of the WVOM Morning Show because that's how we do at the top of the hour. got to say what's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom as well as Miss Sonia Escobar, the music conductor of the soul playing Ty. Yeah. It's coming, man. It is NBA All-Star Weekend. Yeah. Weekend. Not one game. It's three days of action. Actually, it's more than three days because they starting on Thursday, Wednesday. It's stuff. I got a list of all of the public affairs and PR events that are going on. But the thing that I am super excited about, Todd, is three the points. NBA crossover. Oh, that's right. They now, check it out. Over. Everybody can be a part of the experience if they go with the convergence of the NBA and pop culture. Remember when NBA seemed like they was trying to reject pop culture? Yeah. Remember when they was trying to, you got to wear a suit. There will be no more. Remember, like, all the anti Allen Iverson rules and stuff? Now it seems I, like. I, I was all for them. I am so old school. I, and I'm <laughs> so for. Uh, you know what? I, it, I, I, I waffle. Like, I enjoy seeing our. You know, people being able to express themselves. I think, though, that I do think that because I do think it was pretty dope to see, like, the Bulls when they would be all dressed up and tailored in suits and getting yeah, ready to go. I thought, that was kind of I thought it was dope to see, like, you know, to see them. at. It was like the whole thing. Now it's like we're a businessman. Right. We yeah. got to take care of business on the court. Then we go, you know. So it, it is a little different, but um, they're, they're also fashion plates. Well, I'm going to tell you what. They are fashion plates. And M the NBA is probably one of the biggest drivers of pop culture at this point. And so I cannot wait. Check it out. Kobe White will be there. Gary Payton. Don C. from Chicago, as well as Hebrew Brantley from Chicago. Both artists that have had relationships. Plus Ronnie 2K. You got some of the current players that will be there as well. Man, I'm going to take my son on Saturday because Muggsy Bogues is going to be there. You know, Muggsy Bogues was the short. He was short like Spud Webb. But he used no, to. He wasn't. He was 5'3". 
Oh, right. He was shorter than this Spud Webb, Webb, which is incredible. And but he, remember, he, him and Manute Bowl played on the same team. So <laughs> the shortest dude in the world on basketball and the tallest he dude in basketball. Him to, to get to, to, uh, to Manute be, Bowl. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, so NBA All-Star crossover. Check it out. Now, I also want to encourage you all to download the uh, NBAevents.com. Go to NBAevents.com and download the event apps to unlock and enhance your NBA experience. Also want to tell y'all, man, you got to check out, because today at 8 o'clock, we are going to be discussing the Chicago all-time starting five basketball players. But you got to get Posterize the app and vote. Mm -hmm. Ty, did you download Posterize? Download Posterize. Cause, and then, look, we're going to go to the Jack Daniels party, because then everybody, go, all the basketball players going to be there drunk. Talk about, oh, remember that time I dunked on you in eighth grade? <laughs> have you ever been to like a Chicago basketball stars reunion? Have you ever been around like, cause like, you ever been around Chicago basketball players? They they could be eighty years old and they act like they still playing. You can always tell an old school Chicago basketball player. It's like a fraternity, man. Like even if you went to a scrub school, they all be walking around like, man, I'm still. Oh, uh, don't go you today. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm on some some uh, uh, Facebook posts. About <laughs> And yeah, the, the people who play basketball, they speak in a different voice. DK, where you at, man? I want to hear your top five. Hey, man, uh, like I was, it's a little, you know, that's some good people, man. I was looking at that list. How about, well, let me stop because I want to go into my new topic. Eight o'clock, download Posterized Dad. We're going to talk about it. Don't forget All Star Weekend. Plus, we got uh, Kara, what, what, what's her name? Kara, Kara, uh, Kara, Kara Bachman from. Chicago Sports Commission will be here to tell us about what's in it for the black people with the All Star Game. All right, y'all. Ty, did you see the story in the Sun Times about uh, the North Side scrap metal yard that for years and years have been like? It, I always wondered how uh, was it General Metal? What's the name of it? I can't think of the name of it. But Ty, you ever see that? You ever go up north? Like when you buy Clyborne and you like all of those nice shops and all of that stuff. And then all of a sudden you smell and you see this big old, uh, boom, and it's just done. You see all these homeless people and people with shopping carts all over in Lincoln Park because they're going to the scrap metal yard. I think it's General Iron. I think no. that's. Huh? No. Never. No, no, no. I, 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 it's, what's in there? Streetwise. Uh, it's off of Clyborne, like Clyborne and Damon and all that good stuff, oh. like off behind North Avenue and all that stuff. So anyway, Todd, you see, I, they don't get out that much. I used to say, how do they get to keep this? You know, like I was thinking to myself, with all these white folks around here with these babies pushing stuff, how do they keep this thing open, right? The toxins, all the stuff in the air, you know, all the black people pushing they uh. With their grocery carts pushing the metal that they took out of your garage. <laughs> yeah. Like, they, they got, I'll be like, how are y'all taking these people's gutters? Exactly. Right? Like, like, the guy's rolling down the street with a pack of gutters, but you take it to the, to the scrapyard and they take it. Right? Yes, because there's no, there is no downside because they will not be uh, accused of theft because it's going to be all mashed up. Fencing or dealing in stolen goods. Right. So, even though I'll be like, dog, that is a whole washing machine. How did they get a whole washing machine? And it still got tags on it. <laughs> they be like, how could I could scrap this? Hey man, I told you I had a school, man. Like it's stuff that be like they be like, you know what? I'ma go in and I'ma take every piece of metal that they they tried to cut the banisters, man. No, I, I well, our house uh, was abandoned. My uh, my mother's cousin was the last person. She left it and didn't tell anybody. And oh, you know, at that point it's all. We used to call, uh, I forgot the name of the salvage place, but they, the people would come in and they took everything, the doorknobs my grandfather made, they just stripped that house to the bare bones. And melted it. And yeah, they, didn't, the they didn't even have no, so Todd. Ty- some of the things, you know, they take to these places that sell back to you when you want a fancy door. They're like, hey, take right, this right. that was made in 1916. The restoration places. Yes. Right. So Todd. Ty- so, the thing is, I, 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 I didn't realize, I was wondering how did this company stay active, but then when you go and look at their D2s, then you see that they was dropping big money. Big money, matter of fact, they last, the kind of big contribution, besides Susanna Mendoza, who took like 100, I think Susanna took $100,000 from them while she was running for mayor, which basically said, this will pay me to protect your place. That would be my guess. Um, Todd... 
They had clout. They donated to all the big politicians, etc. Well, now there's a new sheriff in town. And apparently she is no longer allowing them to stay. Rahm had given them a grant to stay open till 2022. And I knew so many people that had, like, if you had money, you wrote that, you made it to the Rahm, you had clout. Because if you wrote a check over $50,000, you was just good. Hmm. Right? You, they was going to make something happen. But Todd, I guess my question is now, we saw that this company, General Iron, is scrapping iron is being, um, they're being ticketed because they're not saying the city's trying to run them out. And their clout has run out. Todd, and I was just thinking, like, who has clout now? Like, the Daily Era clout is morphed, right? Because at one time, all the clout went to the rich Irish crews. Then, when Rom came, the clout went to investment funds, investment fund managers from... Some of them. A big, a big chunk of it. Yeah, but like because there, there was still a lot of the old guys who still was right, 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 right. Okay, I'll give you that. But there was a whole new wave of people that came in mm -hmm. from New York. Now, I guess my question is, who has the clout now, and who's the black clout holder? Remember, for us, it used to be the BLC, and then they went with Tony Preckwinkle. And they went hard with Tony Preckwinkle, even though the young people in their organization was like, Tony Preckwinkle not going to win. And if we go too hard, we're not going to have any clout left. Well, guess what? Tony Preckwinkle didn't win. So now my question is, who has the clout in City Hall? And who has the black clout? Give us a call, 312-374-8130. 312-374-8130. Who's got the clout? In City Hall. And how do we get some black clout? We'll be back after traffic and the weather. You said, hmm. More of the Who morning clout, show man? with Mace. You know, a lot of that cloud is behind doors. Right. Now we know some of the ministers do. Who? What black ministers have clout? Brazier? Yeah, Brazier. I mean, with this mayor. Yeah, with this one too. She's still somebody, uh, he's still somebody who who can uh, talk to the fifth floor, from what I know, from what I hear. Yeah. Bishop Trotter, he's someone who can talk to the fifth floor. I just need to give y'all one more time. Do y'all did y'all see yesterday how the Tribune just straight jacked me? Did you see that yet, Todd? Did you see how the Tribune oh, just did. jacked me? I did. Like straight up. Can we call that anything but a jacking? Can we? Really? Yeah, they they just took your idea basically. What's in the for the black people meeting tonight? Dang, Mike, I gotta watch it. Louisiana church fire suspect pleads guilty. I hope that he goes to what's that jail in Louisiana? Angola? Man, I hope he go to Angola and get a date. <laughs> Todd. 
Ah, uh, you got the camera. That one. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, man. It's almost time. No, me, you just want to do what you want to do. That's not the way it should be, no. You should listen to me. You better listen to me, boy. Very hard to make you understand. But the choices you make, oh, man, you try so very hard. To keep my love alive But you don't want to meet me halfway Then the understanding guy There's no way that we could work it out If we don't pull together I don't mean to be committed But I want some understanding I want to be with you What I need from you is understanding to me communicate Don't do, do, do what I say What I need from you is understanding Pull as one, two, three Understanding is what we need you are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago, 16, 90 a.m. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, George Stroger. All right, Todd, I can't wait because in just about five minutes, you are going to be giving us our amazing black fact. But I've got to, um, Todd, i got to ask, who has the clout in City Hall? And who has the clout for black people? And I'm checking out my man, uh, Sean Howard. Shout out to Sean Howard. Sean says that just because you have access to the mayor's office now does not mean that you necessarily have clout. So just because she'll take your call don't mean she'll listen. <laughs> I'm saying who is the pe who are the people that when the mayor calls she like I gotta do. It. I, I bet you I can tell you who. No, I can tell. Neil Bloom. Who's that? Neil Bloom is the the multi billionaire casino hedge fund. I mean multi billion dollar casino person. I'm gonna tell you who else got clout with Mayor Lightfoot. Rich Daly. Hmm. Uh, Mayor Daly can probably still y'all know Mayor Daly yeah all you I, I you know I'm not surprised because even though Mayor Daly came from Bridgeport he was as Bridgeport as you can be as he uh, got older a million dollar casino person the more of the progressive wing lawyer types right and then you well you know if you went to go work at that law firm she was at you couldn't get there without Daly them saying he was going there anyway mm -hmm. right like this is so so. It's the same thing that happens. So this is how government people take care of their people. You come in, you do a good job for me, you can do all the whackings and all the hittings that I need you to do, and then I refer you to a law firm, right? Not a lobbyist, but a law firm. And then you go work at that law firm and you make ungodly sound amounts of money, like seven fifty, eight hundred dollars an hour. They call those white shoe law firms, mm -hmm. right? And so essentially, I would tell you that that's who has the clout with Lori Lightfoot. I bet you those are the people she thinks that are qualified, like big time law firms and legal firms. Um, oh, yeah. I think we see that in, in how, why she, she grabbed these people from Naperville. Naperville. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because they come in, commute, drive in, and then get on the metro and go back out to the burbs. Um, I'm going to tell you that, uh, what's the, uh, Ty Fainer? Yeah. Well. Ty Fainer, uh, wealthy, well known Republican. Uh, Beanie Baby guy, right? Didn't he do Beanie Babies? Beanie Baby. Uh, Ty Fainer did Beanie Babies, but he is wealthy, very politically active, uh, but very on the austerity side of the budget. You know, I think the mayor walks a very... she hope, I think this nonpartisan election allows her to 
float in and out. Like she goes, she makes Democratic endorsements, but hangs out with Republicans. Yeah. Right. So she get as the mayor of Chicago. It's assumed that she's a Democrat, even though you don't. She says she's independent. But can I tell you something, Todd? Up until Trump. If you made over seven fifty an hour, and I'm talking about hundred fifty an hour, mm-hmm. you weren't trying to be no Democrat, no kind of way, because they was trying to tax it. Let me go to Anita real quick. Anita, who has clout in City Hall now? Hi, good morning. Good morning. I'll to Todd also. Um, I think the people need to stay in charge of their government and and do things like what you know Dorothy Tillman tells them to do as far as being involved in their government and Reverend Jesse Jackson. If we do, we don't do that. N- nothing is going to help us. But I wanted to say that we had Obama, and then he he endorsed Rahm Emanuel, and we ended up not getting a whole lot of things that we thought we were going to get. So we still have to be careful. And Rahm Emanuel kind of like ousted Mayor Daley, and now we're talking about going back to Mayor Daley with uh, Mrs. Lightfoot or Mayor Lightfoot. So I don't know how that's going to work out. But I did call because I wanted to say something about the Malcolm X. Well, come on. If I can. You got yeah, to. We're running out of time. Go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, now to this day, I think the country doesn't want black people involved with the Muslims in the East because they feel like they could supply us with money and weapons and things like that. And I think there's more involved in black people in the Muslim community than Malcolm X. I think people in the world do not want us to be connected to the Muslims in the East because they feel like we can get money to maybe outpower them. So I wouldn't put a, put away Israel and things like that for being involved in maybe his death. Thank you. All right, y'all. That, is, that was a meeting of Todd. But now, Todd, it's time for our amazing Black Fact. This Black History Month, the WVON Morning Show is proud to present Black, black Facts. Facts. With today's Black Fact... Here's WVON Morning Show host, Todd Stroger. All right, Mace, our black fact today is about Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Uh, He was a U.S. author whose reputation rests upon his verse and short stories written in black dialect. He was born in Dayton, Ohio in 1872. Both his parents were slaves. Uh, He was thought to be one of the few people at that time who had no uh, European lineage who was brought up to be a well-known figure in the white world. Uh, He went to the Columbian Exposition in here in Chicago in 1893 and uh, he uh, he met uh, Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass liked him. He had him read some of his poems. Uh, He became a great author and a poet. He traveled Europe. Uh, He unfortunately got tuberculosis uh, and uh, died at an early age of 33. Uh, some people say that he died more of a uh, broken heart as he noticed even though people loved his poems, they still looked at him as a black man and could not really truly be part of society. Still OJ, right? But let me tell you what, you, you go into those artiste worlds where all the white people fawn over you and they be like, look, it's my, oh, my wonderful colored friend. <laughs> but at the end of the day, still freaking OJ. Paul Robeson, he is Paul our mate, Paul Dunbar, excuse right, me. Dunbar. He was our amazing black fact. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about clout plus what's going on in the Supreme Court race as well as the clerk of the circuit court will be back. That TB is a killer. Huh? That TB tuberculosis. There was no cure for it. Even now it's dead. And that's a fact, Jack. I tell you, I, I met uh, Harold uh, Ramis. You ever met him? The, the guy, the uh, From movies? And, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I met him uh, over at the Taste of Chicago. We were doing something. I said, I man, I loved all your movies. He said, really, which one do you like? No, no, he said, I said, I really love you. Just stuff. He said, yeah, which, which movie do you like? And I was like, all of them. 
you know, when somebody puts you on the spot like that, it's hard to just to say, uh, uh, no. Sally Mae. <laughs> <laughs> Jake the Meister. <laughs> I guess maybe that's why I understand Jacob Meister a little. What? What? What are you asking me a question like that? Even though I, I mean, I should have been able to, to throw one out. Because you know, he, he, he fell right in my wheelhouse, which is probably what I should have said. Because he was writing and acting when I was a, a teenager and, you know, just going to college and getting out in the world. When I really think about it, I, I would have said Animal House. Even though he wasn't in that, he wrote it. Death Crowd Dead, that, that was one of my favorite movies of all time. Stripes was funny, Ghostbusters was funny. He directed those movies, analyzed this and analyzed that. You know, some other stuff I can't remember. He helped write Caddy Jack. You just wanna do what you wanna do. That's not the way it should be, no. Take care of something for You better listen to me. Salvage One, yeah, that's where people would take all the stuff they stole from the house. If you wanted to buy your Well, house, Salvage One, wasn't that a TV show too? When Andy Griffin made a rocket ship out of junk? Huh. Remember that? No, I can't remember that. Andy Griffin. Wow, check this out. The Democratic Party of Evanston has endorsed state's attorney Kim Fox, but then they endorsed for Supreme Court Daniel Epstein. So are they they're going against the slate? Yeah. Evanston Township. Huh? We got a baby face thing going here. 
But I know the love is cozy, but needs so much more. Yeah. It just intensifies enough to have a love that in Oh. Every time I close my eyes, I think of you. And no matter what the reasons are, I still love you. With all my heart, I'm to be with you. Wherever you are, I only think of you on two occasions. That's day and night. I'd overgrow if I could be with you. Only you that make it right. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, George Stroger. I know that's like in my top three uh, with uh, Baby mm-hmm. Face and L.A. Mm-hmm. Sure. Hey, let me tell you what, man. That's a jam, bro. Um, You know what? That might have been one of the best ever. That might have been one of the best ever Chicago Urban League events I ever went to. When they had uh, Babyface. Oh, really? Because, you know, when Babyface sings, it's like, you be like, good Lord, he got a lot of songs. <laughs> a lot of songs. And it's like, yeah. you know, I was like, man, I came. I was like, one of those guys you forget how much he's been involved in. Right. Yeah. And then you be like, I was looking at Carrie like, mm. you like, yeah. you heard that one? Remember that? Uh, Look at that? I'm going to tell y'all, that, that, that Urban League, I was like, man. That baby face is something else. Good Lord. Thank you, baby face. Thank you. Thank you, baby face. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you real good. Because you blessed me real good. All right, y'all. Stop Chicago 1690. Don't forget, 8 o'clock, top five. Plus, we got Kara Bachman from the Chicago Sports. Wait, she's from the, wait, what is it? She's from the Chicago Sports Commission. I need to be on that commission, man, so I can tell everybody what to do. Get I could be dunking on people and everything. All right, y'all. I always wanted to be a, a Big Ten commissioner. You know what? I always wanted to be like a. I wanted to be like on one of those sports things so you could go to all the games and wave, and you don't really gotta do like a hard job, but you could be on like a like IHSA board and all that stuff, ah. right? Like one of those good boards and commission. I don't ever get no good love though. It's like everybody call me when they need some help, oh. but don't nobody ever call me and say, hey, we got a great opportunity for you, Maze. Maze, what I realized is I would have to put all my energy in running for a high office so somebody can come and say, hey, man, what do you really want to do? Yeah. I want to be a big tech commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late for that, though, man. You know, like I think you, you, you got you to gotta scare them, man. You got to scare That's you know, the point. They, they think you might win or, or mess up their opportunity to win. Because yep. you don't have to actually look like you're going to win. Right, you, you just got to mess up their stuff. Them, yeah. So I, that's one of the things we're going to talk about. Oh, by the way, did you all know that tonight is the second Tuesday? So we have our What's In It For The Black People meeting. I'm telling y'all now, don't come to my joint trying to disrupt. You come to my meeting, you come in an hour meeting. Respect the space. We I'm will. Coming. Man, I'm I'm not, not, ain't nobody here. Like, hey, wh- wait, wh- what is it for me? Well, let me tell you what we got this time. What you, got? Well, you know what? Randy inspired us to security. Uh-oh. Yeah, so guess what? You I'm, know, bringing, I'm bringing high. You know what? Well, here's the thing. It was like when Randy came and he came to my meeting and then tried to shout me down in my meeting, right? I was like, and, and the people was looking like, what? We, and I was like, this is what we got a sergeant arms for. But the sergeant in arms was looking at me like, you want me to do it? And so I think now what we've decided is you just got the authorization. If you can't you know respect what? our meeting, that ain't no sense. talk. It ain't no, don't talk. Don't even look at me. Don't even look at me. Just do what you got to do. And I'm going to tell you, it's like people, it it be crazy to me because I'm like, you, you do realize you're in my office, right? And you do realize like Jay-Z got a song where it's like everywhere, everything you touch, something somewhere, it's like you do, cl- be clear, I'm going to be secure in my own office. Okay. In my own home, I'm going to be secure. So you come with all that craziness you want to, it's going to be one moment when I say, I'm tired. That's it. So Sergeant at Arms will be there. So y'all feel free. Nobody will be out shouting out. We have an orderly meeting, and I'm telling you now. I got a quick story. So my dad is trying to be the, the finance chairman again, and Richard Phelan is trying to knock him out. And Commissioner Butler has told him he's working behind your back to, to get you out. So my dad told goes, your dad this? Huh? He told your dad this? Yes. Okay. So my dad goes to all the commissioners. They're like, no, John, we're with you. He rewrites the rules, and this is when the independents were always trying to burn him at the stake. 
Bobby Rush is on the floor talking to uh, Mr. Butler like crazy. You can't do this. You can't be with him. You can't be with him. Wait, Bobby Rush is telling you not to be with Stroger? Yeah. yeah. What? This, this is before they decided that he was, he was actually smart. This is why all these people got to stop. Go so, so, my dad says uh, later on, he says, man, I'm glad Bobby Rush did that because he made us write a rule that nobody can come on that, that floor except for commissioner staff and people who used to be commissioners. Mm -hmm. Change the rules because of chaos. Right. And so... Shout out to Randy, who decided he was going to come to my meeting and shout out and act crazy and act <laughs> cool. And so now we have security. There you go. So everybody's welcome to come. Oh, yeah, they voted. The team voted that I have security now. So I guess I won't be you having any more. I won't be. No, no, no. Like, I won't be. They're going to be going places now so that when the Alice and Allisons of the world decide that they want to and all the manic staff from all the men. You mean, uh, when we're together office. and I, I don't really like what you said, I can't hit you in the ribs anymore? No, you can't. Damn it. Because somebody's <laughs> going to, you know. The, well, let me tell you what, the <laughs> best part was, <laughs> the best part was the sisters. Because the sisters was like, you know, we know how to be professional. But we also know how to handle the business. Then yesterday, I'm going to tell you, one of my uh, exec board members came to the meeting. And it was so funny because she took off her hat. And she was like, you see, I got my scrunchie and my ponytail is only this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I was like, oh, I felt so loved yesterday. All right. Anyway, Todd, a um, couple things I want to talk about. I want to talk about, first of all, um, the Supreme Court race in which black people are going to officially shoot themselves in the foot. We still have three black candidates in a race for the black seat that will now probably more than likely become the white seat. You know, um, I am not, I'm going to be honest with you, Todd, and I don't feel like people are paying very much attention to this race. Like, I don't, I really don't feel like we're in an election season. Nah, it's pretty quiet. It's, right? I mean, it's like we're less than Almost 60. Eerily it's eerily quiet. And I think some people want it to stay that way. Yeah. Um, but I think black folks, couple things. I think we got to get out for Kim Fox. Um, I'm going to tell you that this lack of enthusiasm, though, Makes me nervous. I think Kim Fox runs away. I think she wins this thing without a problem. But I do think there needs to be turnout. And I don't see excitement. If, and my challenge is, I feel like white people will sell you out. Right? The white North Shore people will be like, so black folks need a reason to come out and vote. I don't think that all this. This is the Tom Bradley. What was it the Tom Bradley effect? What? The Tom Bradley. What was it? Tom Bradley from California? What was it? He ran for governor. And all the uh, the exit polls were like, oh, he's going to run away with this. And he didn't. That's because people thought he was going to run away. Well, they said, yeah, I voted for him. But they actually did So, guys, we got to be on top of this Kim Fox thing. Um, this Supreme Court justice, I'm going to tell you, this race has been lackluster. And I am concerned that somebody out of the blue with little to no time is going to come out. First of all, let me tell you, did you Let me ask you a question. Do you think that the North Shore whites might be split on Conway? A lot of them might reject him just because they think that he's not he's not part of that kind of progressive group that they're looking for. I think that white people are white people. I think mm. Kim here's what I think. I think Kim Fox allows white progressives they're Barack Obama, I'm not a racist, I'm not prejudiced moment, mm -hmm. right? So I think you're going to see all the white progressives galvanize, and you'll see like the, you know, you know how them white North Shore liberals, they'll all be behind Kim. Right. Right? But at the same time, I don't know if they go out of their way to go knock on doors and be like, you got to be with Kim because of their people. Right. Right? Like, I think... It's like I always. It's like I get tired of people saying oh, such and such is with me. Such and such is with me. I'd be like, what does with me mean? Yeah. Right. Like if they ain't got nothing. Like let me tell you. Like Bridget Gaynor and Mike Quigley, when when Pencil Neck Paul went against uh, Carrie and turned the forties. Well, I can't remember what ward that was. He turned their ward and he didn't endorse Carrie. And uh, what's that? Raja. What's his name? Ra, uh, what's the other guy? What's the guy that was Indian that was in city council? Yeah, Patar. Patar. Right. They both decided they got with the white no, North Shore liberals and said that they were going to go against Kerry. And uh, Bridget Gaynor and Mike Quigley said, we're with you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, with you, with you, with you. And they were like, well, this is what with you means for us. We're going to do a mailer. 
with our names to everybody in our ward and we're going to tell them to vote for you. We're also going to do a robocall. We're also going to knock on doors and tell people through our platforms. Uh, Solid. Solid. Most of these people be running around, such and such says they're with me, right? Such and such says they're with me and they ain't got nothing. They got nothing to be with you with. Right. So I think, Todd, that one of the things that concerns me is that um, there's like this, this premise in the world that the party can get you. The party can't get you. The party can roll with, I was talking to a, a Cook County Democratic Party operative, and he, it's basically like they rolling with what the people do, and they're going to claim the victories that they got. They don't feel like they can turn the vote. Mm -hmm. right? they like, well, Carbonardi is going to lose, and we don't know about uh, uh, Scott and Neville. Now, these are both slated candidates, and I'm saying, wait, ain't you a member of the party? Ain't you like on the? Ain't you supposed to be responsible for? I, and I ain't you supposed to be responsible for electing these people? You supposed to be telling me to pat the victory? How you gonna do it? And they all kind of like, well, they are gonna lose, but what can we say? They're right. They, they don't feel like they're powerful anymore. And but again, that's because they spent their whole life trying to kill the party. Now they trying to be in charge of. It. Right. They're trying to be in charge of a carcass. Trying to be and and the carcass that they help create. And they still don't even know how to revive it. They don't even know how to put no meat on the bones. You got a bunch of people who have never worked a competitive campaign. Never. Never had to win a race. They've been given races, and they've been, you know, it's like when you, remember when in Rocky Three when he, Mick told Rocky, you've been fighting bust outs, lanes, all those guys. <laughs> Rocky, and not, you don't have it. It's like the party don't have it. And it's like some people are going to pay for it. Right. But i tell you what we got to do. We got to get our bus out for Kim Fox. Now, I'm going to tell you, Kim Fox and Richard Boykin, because I think we could stick a we could stick a fork in them if we get Richard Boykin over Carbon Talk Chicago 1690. <laughs> I'm taking the family somewhere for a tennis vacation. Days. When? I don't know. I gotta find out. What's a tennis a vacation? A watch? Yeah, so we'll go somewhere and watch be one of the uh, tournaments. Oh, go to Florida. They got a. Um, they or go to New York. Open, but I think that's during school, actually. Oh. I think that's the best part when you could bounce out of school to go do something. I like my children, but not that much. I'll be like, I paid for that. Right, I'll be like, I am paying for these things. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes, they will send me a notice that I didn't pay. Todd and Sonia, get it. Uh, get it. Get that. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. St. Ignatius has three nuns. We had one nun back in the day. Sister Mary something, Sister Mary something else, and Sister Mary something else. Obligations to the school that I need to take care of. Okay, that's the first thing. Ah, that's the new D. Put it right to me, D. Maybe that's not the new D. Alright. Alright. Plus portals. That's how you take care of all your business. I can never remember my passwords if I've been more than three weeks. Uh, 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 
hard to remember who you are. And it's this kind of place they make you make that hard pathway. Slow song, slow dancing song. You are tuned into Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host, Torch Soldier Todd, and I'm talking about these uh, races. You know, Todd, I, I, I got a feelings on two races. I think that the Democratic Party of Cook County has done a general disservice to black folks. You mean politically? I mean, I think more than just like they usually do. Mm -hmm. I think that um, the party has is in some shapes, some way, cases or forms a paper tiger. Think about this. Think about the fact that the black seat for Supreme Court justice that was, in my estimation, an agreement with the power structure that a black person should be on the Supreme Court. We have three candidates running, right? Right. We have Justice Peter Scott in the bill, who is currently the sitting Supreme Court Justice. We have uh, Nate House, who is running an insurgent campaign with a variety of black elected officials who are compromising this race, who probably in some way, shape, or form voted, or were, who, are, who are parts of the Democratic Party and the Democrat, Cook County Democratic Party, and the party voted to slate. And yet, black committeemen are going out the back door. And by doing that, did you just see that I was just reading in Politico today that the Evanston Township Democrats have now decided to to back Daniel Epstein. Now, here's the thing that I think black folks got to pay attention to. When black folks show disunity, then it gives the white folks the opportunity to run straight up the middle. And say, look, y'all didn't support y'all own candidate. And it's all good. It's like, I understand that everybody feels like, man, everybody thinks that their candidate has a chance to win. But I'm just going to tell you, with three black candidates, I can pretty much assure you that no black candidate is going to win. Yeah. That history is in the indication. And the white folks get it. And it's like, here's my thing. In the same example, we are now tied to seeing the white, a white Supreme Court judge step, step down. Wasn't no big old debate. The white folks said, put this next Burke in the spot and we'll, we'll proceed. The same time, the Democratic Party, same people who are compromising and crossing each other out are going to come to the black community and say, we have to be loyal. And so they're going to tell us that we should vote against the black candidate for clerk of the circuit court, which controls the most jobs between seventy dollars and $150,000 in the county. Mm -hmm. And even as white folks are double, triple crossing us, you're going to have black folks trying to tell us we should not support Richard Boykin. Why? Why? Can the party, Todd, I'm, and you said you had a spokesman for the party, but I keep asking, what are the base hits that the party can point to for black people? Look, Richard Boykin stood up against the pop tax. He stood up. He said y'all should get feminine products for women without extra stuff. He did a lot of stuff, right? He did. Richard Boykin, you can count. Richard Boykin was the person who pointed out that there is zero percent contracting, black contracting at the Cook County Health and Hospital Systems. Zero. No, what? But guess what? You will have black people telling you that oh, he's a Republican. I mean, he was going. Hey, man. Same people support. I guess my and and then gonna tell us we gotta support the white boy. Think about the gravity of them as they take as the white folks are cleaning up. We got all these black elected officials in power, and those same black elected officials in power who we voted in are gonna tell us to vote for the white boy. I'm going to the phone calls. 
Let's go to Jeff. Jeff, you're on top of Chicago, 1600. Hey, hey, good morning, Brother Mays and uh, Brother Ty. What's good up, Jeff? Hey, 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 Brother Mays, you know I'm with you 100%, brother, since day one. But Mays, have you seen, though, uh, Kim's current uh, re-election commercial she, she has going on? Yeah, man. Yeah, come on, come on, bro, Mays, well, brother, that's against everything we talking about, brother. Everything we standing for, that's just another knife in the back, man. Man. Honestly. Jeff, so this is how I got into this. What was the commercial at? You know, she she did a commercial talking about how she got to protect immigrant rights and how oh. we got to fight everybody against Donald Trump. And it's like, I, okay, so let's start here. I'm not going against Kim Fox. And... I don't care. All them commercials ain't going to change the fact that she has exonerated more black people than anybody in history. I'm not. I, and and that, that makes those commercials drive me up a wall. But I have to put that in a box. There's a lot of things on the Kim piece that I got to put in a box. But I got to think about what is the greater good for our community. Well, you know, she's got to. She's talking to more than just you. I agree. However, however. The challenge always comes with a lot of these candidates that win is that they they are always taught that they can they can huh. It's like I'm damned if I do, I'm damned if I don't. We are 100 percent behind Kim Fox, but I do think that their white strategists tell them that you got the black vote, you need to go worry about everybody else. Yeah, and I, I think that. Jeff points out some things that I would hope that the campaign listens to. We are often ignored as a group. Politically, when you get all of these white consultants who say, I told you when I was on Pat Quinn's campaign, they told me, Mays, don't worry about the black vote. What are they going to do? Vote Republican? <laughs> no, what, so, they, what they do is they don't vote at all. Right. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to leave that alone. Let me go to uh, Green. Green, you're on top of Chicago 1690. How you doing, Mays? I am so glad you endorsed working like you did. Because that means a lot to us. We were waiting for your um, your 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 scorecard. We got a, a man who the judges. The judges are who I'm talking about. Arthur Southern's black man, South Suburb. We need your support. I'm not a self. I'm, I mean, he's just a friend of the family. But those judges that we say we wasn't going to put back in again and again. I want to just thank you for you know letting us know that Bork is our man. And Kim Fox, so we going for it. I'm in a car wire, so forgive me. No, that's all good, man. Green, I appreciate you. Yeah, we with Kim Fox. Like, I'm gonna tell you, you can make some mistakes, and we gonna spend some time getting that together. And I'm gonna tell you, over the next four years, we'll work on keeping it accountable. But like, you ain't gonna reform a hundred years worth of white racist criminal justice locking black folks up in four years and nobody's gonna get it all right all the time but i tell you what we ain't gonna throw the baby out of the bathwater unless you are the candidate that the party is telling us we need support for clerk of the circuit court because i'm still have we heard from the white candidate about what he gonna do for black people have we can we get uh mike carbonage on the wbo on the show oh no you know what i heard he had a his consultants probably told him he can't come here. Top Shop 1690, we'll be back. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation is... Hmm. Take a moment to share the broadcast. Todd and Sonya are talking to you. I'll talk to him, Kyle. Oh, man. You know, usually, a website will help you with your username and your password. I can't remember my username. It's just... My wife says to write all this stuff down. The security people tell you don't write anything down. <laughs> it's a dilemma. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what Carbonaggi is doing. Uh, Carbonaggi is, first of all, he hired a lame-ass consultant to be his person. Like, So my thing is, you you pick a consultant that makes more enemies than friends. Wow. 
right? So think about this. Think about his consultant went on the radio, went in publications, and then said that he was going to spend his time and everything he could do to elect a candidate that would vote against Kerry, right? So you're saying that, oh, right? I know that would be. Right, so you're saying that as you represent another candidate. And so my premise is, everything that you do, we're fucking that candidate. Yeah, that like, so here's the deal. So dear candidate, you know how you are getting fucked right now? Is because you picked wrong. So you hired somebody that decided that his personal beef was more important than your campaign. So what he did was he went into a public, uh, went into political, and went into a publication and put in writing how he was going to work and do everything he could to destroy the first black woman, president of MWRD. Now, if you read Ben Franklin, Ben Franklin says, never buy, never argue with the person who buys ink by the barrel. Right? You understand what that means? So if every time you talk, six people hear you, and every time I talk, 30,000 hear me, you lose, jackass. But not only do you lose, your candidate loses. And what always happens, Todd, is so funny to me. In all these campaigns, people get so mad at me that they forget about the race that they're responsible for. And then they spend their time attacking me. And it's like, you losing time for your candidate. And, and like, so you bring your candidate to the to WVON senior thing. Now you're going to bring, which is one of the largest, most populated events, and you're going to bring your kin. So now you're there with the mug who just said they was going to do everything to fuck my, my, fuck my family over, right? And you in my house. Like, so you're, you're going to come to the WVON event, and after saying we're going to do X, Y, Z, A, B, C. So, basically, every time, it's the same thing with the Allison Allison shit. Allison Allison can't do nothing. She, it don't hurt. Nothing. It hasn't hurt her. So you got to hurt Pat Dow. You right. got to make Pat Dow pay. So now, right? So Allison Allison decided that she was going to come and attack me with the thoughts that it would stay between me and her. Brad, you don't count. Right. I'm going I'm I'm to. So now you just got Pat Dow back to being Rat Dow again. What you did was you just reactivated me going to talk to all of the people at NTA. What you did was that the NTA documentary that's coming out, you just guaranteed that Pat Dow is going to be looking like a, a psycho. Man. So, again, Carbonargi decided he was going to hire someone that was going to take his time to make enemies while trying. His, your, your, your campaign person should not be in any fights during your campaign. No, who cares time for that? Like they shouldn't be talking shit about nobody else because all of the, you right? So now But it's all good. It's like we gonna teach him how to play politics. And so now this guy's wondering why every time I go somewhere and I'm supposed to have this dude that got the community and not the people are like, wait, you the white boy that's trying to take out Boykin? See how that work? And what's so crazy is the dude is insignificant to me. But I have to show you how insignificant you are. Shout out to Felicia Simmons Stovall. She's the what's in for the black people can look for judge. Take a moment, share the broadcast, baby.
and we're black. Rising. How many Rise and shine with the double Wake up morning show. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Featuring Maze Jackson. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? The WVON morning show. You are tuned in to the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. I'm my host, Torch Trojan. But y'all know how we look at the top of the hour. Gotta say what's up to the WVON Morning Show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom? As well as Miss Sonia Escobar, who seems to be back there getting it. Getting it. She getting it. Low and everything. Um, Todd, you know, I was thinking about the clout. Not the clout, but who, what's going to happen in these elections. All right, Harold, I'm going to go to you, my brother. You have got the first call on this topic. Harold, you're on Talk Travel 1690. Well, first of all, we know who ain't going to vote for Kim Fox, and that is racist white Irish people who run, run this town and stupid Negroes who still see blonde-haired, blue-eyed blue, blue, blue Jesuses who are going to vote against Kim Fox, which is going to require from dry bone black folks a bottom up grassroots Harold Washington, Mayor Harold Washington 1983 type turnout to get her elected. And I would say the same thing about P. Scott Nivelle and uh, your boy uh, from Inglewood. Uh, I'm having a senior moment on him, but but if we don't get our end, you know, game over. We can start packing our bags in terms of getting out of Dodge. Come back. Thank you, uh, Harold. I appreciate that. I'm going to tell y'all, man, we got to be together on this. It's like, I'm tired of, uh, I'm tired of being dictated to by people who don't, in, our, in my estimation, really have our best interest at hand. I'm not exactly sure. Like, I, we, did y'all see in the paper today, they, or not in the paper, in Politico, they published that the Evanston Township Democrats are no longer supporting P. Scott and the bill. They are supporting one of their own candidates, Daniel Epstein. Now, Todd, that to me is the, is the reason why black people should not be loyal. Right? right? These are the same white folks that sit in the meeting. Look, y'all, if you are a member of the club, it, this is why I can't take the whole party stuff. Right? It's like for all my entire political life up until we got to Bizarro World, it was, even in the fraternity and every organization, majority rules. And if the chapters say this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing. If you lost the vote, you lost the vote. Why is it when black folks are in charge or supposed to be in charge, white folks be like, hey, y'all, I ain't got to listen to that. I tell you about this. I always think about when you all, when the black people ascended to the top of the Young Democrats. Uh -huh. 
and all the white people that, that are now coming, that we keep electing, was like, oh, I'm not going to be down with you. These Negroes ain't going to tell me what to do. Remember J.B. Brisker? Uh, remember they had, the, remember during the uh, election cycle, they had a, un a reunion of DL21C? Yeah. Of all the white, rich liberals who said, I will not allow myself to be in charge, be run by some Negroes. That's exactly right. Seriously. And it's the same people, and then they walk back in it, and be like, yo, hey y'all, act like y'all don't remember that. And guess what black people do? Act like they don't remember it, just like Bloomer. Right? Remember right. y'all was talking about stopping stop and frisking. Oh, oh my God. God. Man, that fool came in and said, I'm going to triple the money anybody else spending. Do y'all know Negroes is running in August? I'm trying to give me some Bloomberg money. I'd be like, a lot of people got locked up, but <laughs> we can get over that. So, Todd, how do we do this? Like, how do... Well, what are black people loyal to? And this is the craziest part to me. You're going to have members of the party, even as their candidates that they voted for, black people were getting crossed. Crossed. They're going to tell you, we got to be loyal. We got to be loyal. Seriously. Well, how does that work? Let's go to Lucio. Luc hey, Lucio, from the War Department? Yes. Lucio, what's up, my brother? How you feeling, man? I ain't treating you over there, man. Oh, uh, brother, I was terminated. You were terminated? What? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You did, that's, that's, so just so you all are clear, and you all remember when the Lions game was formed, when we, when Lucio came on to the WBON Morning Show to expose the racist practices that were happening at the Water Department. Um, and you know what? Let's do this. Get 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 tied to him, and I and because I think this is a different topic. Let's get tied to him and get Lucio. We gonna get you back on the show and get you in the studio. Uh, we gonna push you to the promote to the producer. You have something you want to say on this, but on this topic, because we gonna have you come in and talk about the water department. Hello, Lucio. You there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. What you got? We gonna have you come in and talk about the water department. What you? I'm, so I want you to hold on, but I want to know you have something on this topic. Yeah, uh, the reason you are asking why black folks uh, can't unite is because we don't recognize that we're black first. Hmm. We're seen first by everybody else as black, yet we want to divide ourselves among Baptists, Methodists, Jews, Hebrews, whatever. As long as we keep running away from our blackness, showing that we have no pride in ourselves, we're going to keep being dumped on by everybody else. As we should be, it's, it's, that's, it's, it's, it's right. If you don't stand up for yourself and your fellow black man, what makes you think that a white man is ever going to give you any props? Uh, man, Lucio, and I'm saying, why, why are we even asking? We should be looking to ourselves at this point. So I'm going to tell y'all what, man. Because I, I, I'm, I'm, we're going to come back, we're going to talk about top five. But I, I, I need for you all to understand this. I need for you all to understand that right now there is nobody that is loyal to black people, including the Democratic Party of Illinois. Guys, they, they get on TV, talk about it. Let me, let, do do y'all understand that the legislators in Illinois have been accused of corruption at almost every level? And you know what they look to do? Punish everybody but themselves. Hmm. Think about that, Todd. Like, all of these, all of these stories that we're hearing of corruption and everything, it ain't other people being corrupt. It's the legislators. It's the elected officials being corrupt, and we all just gotta play like it's all good. And 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 I was like yesterday when I was watching uh, that show again, Chicago Tonight. Uh huh. They were talking about why Illinois should be the first. The, the governor feels like Illinois should be the first primary state and all that good stuff right. because we're exemplary. And I was just like, I you don't talk to any of the black people in the state. Have you like? Cause you know what the, you know what would happen? They would come in and say, "Oh, the black people are happy. They love it here." And then you ask the black people, they'd be like, "We hate it." Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to do better. I'm telling you now. Uh, we, we, so Kim Fox, Kim DuBouclé, got to keep Kim DuBouclé. Uh, we also have uh, Richard Boykin, right? We have, a, I'm saying that Richard Boykin, voting for Richard Boykin in this race, and I'm not trying, I'm, well, let me back up. 
I'm not telling you to vote for Richard, Richard Boykin for any other reason than to make the party stand up and pay attention to the fact that black folks ain't taking your, your direction. Could you imagine on election night, if on election night the black people could, because let me tell you what, if Richard Boykin wins, black people can claim it wholly. Wholly. The party can't do it, and then he ain't got to be loyal to them, he got to be loyal to you first. Am I crazy? What did you think, Tom? No, I don't think you're any crazier than usual. <laughs> <laughs> well, then no. I guess that means... No, no you're, you're talking the truth. I, I, and I'm, I'm going to tell you what, guys. It's, it's like, like we got to tell our own truth. Also, you want to learn more about this? Come out to the What's In It For The Black People meeting tonight. Hey, y'all, you, in case y'all did not know, What's In It For The Black People call for the flags to be hung. We are now at the city, county, and state level. That's the first. Next up, we got an election coming up. The What's in it for the Black People Voters Guide. You know what, Todd? And we're also doing a Meet the Candidate series on Facebook Live where we will in, in, uh, interview all the candidates that are willing to come in front of us and place them on Facebook Live so people can hear what they got to say. And we're going to ask black questions. We ain't going to ask that channel 257 stuff. <laughs> we're going to ask what you did for black people, what you plan on doing for black people, how you going to do it. Explain it. Right. Right. Now I'm gonna tell you, anybody that's scared to answer the question what's in it for the black people should be scared to get your vote. You can answer what's in it for the white people, you can ask answer what's in it for the Italians. But damn it, you gonna answer what's in it for the black people and if you're not, we're gonna have you on camera not answer. Mm -hmm. And if you don't come to the studio and do it, we gonna come and catch you on the spot. Did you see how they uh showed up on uh they showed up on Durban yesterday and they kept asking them about uh Mike Madigan? Yeah, yeah, they were. He, he was, was he was ducking, dodging, whatever. We gonna be relentless in getting the answer to what's in for the black people. Hey, y'all, when we come back, tell us who your top five are. Who are the five top five basketball players of all time in Chicago history? We'll be back. More of the morning show. With he's on the list. No, I know he's on the list. I didn't even have to look. Quinn Buckner, no, he's one of mine. That's what I'm saying. You would take Quinn Buckner. Well, he played guard, right? Mm -hmm. So you take him over D Rose? You know what the Thornton's uh, record was? No. I don't remember exactly. But in two years, it was something like 60 and 5 or something. It was incredible. Yeah. Quinn Buckner was amazing in, in high school. He's not on. He's not from it. North Carolina, North Carolina, North Carolina, North Carolina, Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn. Nah, Steve May was born in Brooklyn. Right. And I'm just telling you, this ain't no. The, our meetings are not, the our meetings are about power. So we're clear. Like must be wanting to come and pontificate, I'd be like, "Look, we about the uh, the accumulation of black power. We want the first time when they say how they deal with something, call us first. We looking for somebody, call us. We want our people everywhere. Join the join the mob. Don't join no. Uh, hey, Craig, what's up, man? I need to get my boy in some of that uh action. I know y'all got going on for All Star Weekend. I need him to be in one of them T-shirts and on the float doing the thing." Craig. Yeah, Craig. <laughs> and Craig, I know you got the hookup too. No, Cassiopeia, I do not have Judge Derrico. I see he doing, man, Judge Derrico need to start buying some ads. That's what the hell he need to do. For the record. Must be cracking me up. This I don't no shade, but it's funny to me. I watch people who not and this this is not to anybody in particular. It's like I'd be like, you can advertise on the morning show on the Facebook Live. You know I got the most consistent face and the biggest live audience in the city. Not like one off audience, not pop up, get consistent. Every day. Dang, you got, so you got, Sean got D-Rose, so I don't know who I got. Look, this is what I got. 
I put D Rose, D Wade, Isaiah Thomas, Ben Wilson, Mark Aguirre, Jawan Howard, and Anthony Davis. That's who I got down so far. You are tuned in to the Top of Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Todd, I got to switch it up on y'all. Hey, Todd, the NBA All-Star Game is coming, and I can't wait to talk to Kara Bachman. She is from the uh, Chicago Sports Commission. But before we do that, I want to talk about Chicago's all-time starting five. Now, my girl Joy Glover is working with a new app called Posterized. Yeah, I'm and, working with it right now. And posterize. Download the app. You can get it on the iTunes Store or you can get it on Google Play. But, Todd, it is to settle the fight once and for all. Settle who are the top five starting basketball team out of Chicago. I don't now, know if you can actually do that, but you can pick your own. Okay, well, here's the thing. The thing is there's a big event um, that will be coming out sponsored. Well, I'm not going to talk about that. But what I am going to go into is the fact that Posterized allows you to go through the list and pick your top five NBA, I mean, ba top five Chicago basketball players of all time. And I was talking about this earlier. DK, where you at? Like, DK, Tracy Dilly, I don't see your name on here neither. Right? But Todd is so, is Pierre Cooper on here? I didn't no, see Pierre. Not on there. So, Todd, who are the all time top five starters? In Chicago basketball. Now, you could have gone on to be the NBA because you know we got some playground legends here too. We do. Okay, so I'm going to tell you who I got. I couldn't narrow it down to five, but here's what I got so far. In my guards, in my guard spot, Todd, I got D Rose, D Wade, and Isaiah Thomas. I feel like you can't go wrong with any of those as your as your as your guard. You got three guards, right? No, I'm just I'm saying I couldn't I couldn't I, I had to whittle it down to five. Right. Then I got forwards. So my two forwards I got right now: Ben Wilson, Benji, and Mark McGuire. Cause Mark McGuire was devilish, right? No, oh, he was a man. Yeah, <laughs> a man among boys. Yes. Then for my center, I got Nuke. That's right, Juwan Howard and Anthony Davis. Hmm. Now, I feel like I'm kind of modern, right? Like, I feel like maybe because I saw most of these people play. That's how it works. So, Tyler, who you got in your top five? Give us a call, 312-374-8130. Who are the best basketball players that ever come out of Chicago? And if you had to put a starting five lineup. Now, check this out. On Thursday, they're going to announce it for All-Star Weekend. And everybody's going to be all around Todd. I'm going to be at the party. <laughs> I'm going to be at the party because I'm going to be like, how many of my top five? Who you got in your top five, Todd? Man, it's, it's tough. Because we're really talking high school, aren't we? We're talking the best five. If you had to pick five players that they peak wherever they was, and put them on your team. All right. Then I'm taking uh, Quinn Buckner. Quinn Buckner? Man, Quinn Buckner is one of the few people, when I say few, I mean the list is like in the, the single digit percent of people who won a high school championship, a college championship, and an NBA championship. Okay, I get that. Thank you. Uh, and I'm, of course I'm taking Isaiah. And uh, I'm going to take uh, Mark Aguirre. I'm kind of like you. It's kind of hard to, to not take Mark Aguirre. I mean, all you got to do is be at the bar with Mark Aguirre and you take a Mark Aguirre. Yeah. Uh, uh, I like, uh, let's see, you took three guards. I'm taking Dwayne Wade, too, because he's just something. Um, everybody in the world loves Billy the Kid Harris. So the people who grew up in his age, mm -hmm. 
but he's just a little older than I am, so I'm not taking <laughs> So, but I will take Al Frederick the Great, because if you have a nickname like that. <laughs> Al Frederick the Great, you know for your name to be Al Frederick, and then they put a great on you at the ball. Now, you know who I think I was, uh, you know who I think somebody forgot? Who? Lindsey Hunter didn't play here. Lindsey Hunter played, he wasn't from Chicago. No, he's not from Chicago. No, no. He, no, he played in the Bulls. You know who I thought was um, the bomb who they didn't put on the list? Who? Alonzo Verge. Do y'all remember Alonzo Verge? He was. No. He went to Proviso, one of the Provisos. He went to the other Proviso from the boys, by Donnie Boyce and uh, Mike Finley. But he was, like, at one point. Proviso what? He was a two-time All-Stater. Man, he was a, he's a member of Five Eight City, uh-huh. and it's like hey, he reminds me of one of those players. Like you know what, Zoe would come and get on the court and ball people out, and then he would go game back. <laughs> right? How many of our basketball players? How many people didn't make the list? All right, so y'all, y'all gotta tell me who are your top five basketball players of all time from Chicago? Let me go to Sean. Sean, you gonna tell Chicago? Is that my man, Sean Howard? Hey man, how in the hell did Todd pick Quinn Buckner? <laughs> what the hell is going on with that? Sean, I thought you were closer to my age. Quinn Buckner, you don't know what that, that team actually did, obviously. I know what he did, but he's still wearing Converse, Dr. J. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not only did Thornridge just dominate, but also at IU, they didn't lose a game. Did you sound like it did? Yeah. Okay, come on. Yeah, man. yeah, okay, Bobby Knight stuff, I know. Anyway, I got D Rose, I got Isaiah, Mark Aguirre, Terry Cummins, and Matthew Davis. That's it. Oh, oh I forgot about, about Cummins again. Yeah, Terry Cummins was a beast. Who was his last one? Who's your last one, Sean? Anthony, Anthony Davis. Davis. Oh, and Anthony Davis, okay. okay. Yeah, all right. Take, take, it, take it easy, guys. Thanks, Sean. All right, Sean. All right, come on, y'all, give me a call. 312 374 Hey, man, y'all ain't got, you know, remember Rashard Griffith and uh, Anthony, what was the big, Rashard Griffith, remember the Twins? Thomas Towers? Hamilton. Thomas Hamilton. Man, they were some big he boys. Couldn't, he couldn't pass up a, a burger, man. Man. That's the only thing that I think that stopped him. The co- uh, man, who was the coach? Land, remember when Landon Cox was the coach at King? Yes. Man, boy. And what was that with Bob Hembrick? Bob was at Simeon? That sounds right. Right? Man, see, I used to watch all that. Uh, who are the top five? I'm going to tell you who is in my top five of all the time. You probably don't know this. He's the greatest player in Bat- Bowling Brook history. Well, in old Bowling Brook history. Then, uh, yeah, I don't. Trent Jackson, man. No, I don't know. Trent Jackson! You don't know about Trent Jackson? No, but I believe he was. He must hey, man, Trent Jackson team, balled out, man. He was, like, the first guy, one of our first guys to get, like, a four-year. He was. He went to Wisconsin right before Wisconsin blew up. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw my first college basketball game at Wisconsin. Uh, it was, and you know, it was him, and he played Jay Edwards. Remember Jay Edwards? Jay yeah, Edwards from IU. Man, yeah. Jay Edwards was from Marion, Indiana, which is my mom's hometown. Uh-huh. That dude would drink a fifth of something and get on the court and ball you out. I knew that he had a problem. <laughs> well, Jay Edwards had all type of problems. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you what, when you got that basketball court. So, Todd. Who are the top five? You know what? I just got to make a... I, uh, I, I got to show love to, to Ricky Green. Dang, Ricky Green. One of the Green. fastest man on the court. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, here's what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about oh, he won at Hirsch, and he won at Michigan. I mean, I can name people who won. No, I want people who... Let me go to Aaron real quick. Aaron, you're on top of Chicago, 1690. Top five. Give them to me quick. How you doing? What's up? Good morning. Good morning. Good topics all day. <laughs> I feel like you disrespected my man Marcus Liberty, man. In high school, Liberty was cold. I love dude picked up Terry Cummings. Oh, that was a big, good pickup. Ted Cummins was a bully, too. You know. Man, awesome, man. <laughs> Who else you got? Man, Isaiah's, Isaiah's on my list. I think D. Wade has never really represented Chicago until he get out of Illinois. So he needs to not be on that list, although he's incredible. But y'all forgot about Tim Hardaway. No, I didn't forget about Tim Hardaway. Yeah. It was, no, I just I was thinking, like, with the three people, I, I mean, come on. D. Rose, D. Wade. And Isaiah Thomas, it's hard to pick up to. I can't start with four guards. Aaron, is that Aaron Foster, man? We appreciate you. Yes, Since talk to Chicago, 1690. You funny man. You a funny man. We'll be back after traffic and weather with Kara Bachman from the Chicago Sports Commission. Live from the WBON Newsroom. Is she calling or coming? Calling? 28 degrees and...
the pronto cleaners in laundry. Oh, Hersey Hawkins, Nick Anderson. Hersey never, uh, never. Uh, I mean, like Hersey Hawkins scored like a. Hersey Hawkins was Mr. Ba Basketball Illinois like twice. Mm, let me look that up, Mister. I think you're wrong. Wondering. No, I don't think that's right. But I'm not saying Hershey didn't play. I don't get me wrong. Yeah, at Westinghouse, Westinghouse wasn't a very good team. Uh, he played a lot of center. He wasn't well recognized because they weren't that good and he was playing out of position. Man, when he went to Bradley, he balled out too. Yeah. But I mean, I felt well, like see, I, the, the reason he went to Bradley, you know, Bradley is, was a, a, a mid-major. But yeah, it was a midi. And that was because he was playing, I heard Dick Versace say this. Versace. Whatever. <laughs> he was Dick a Bradley Versace. coach. And he said that uh, the coach called him from Westinghouse and said, hey man, you need to look at this guy. This guy's really good. He's just not playing his position. And that's how Bradley picked him up. Ah. Oh, and, okay, so Naeem Sana Israel. Yeah, I don't want to name Sean Vandiver, man. Is that a Bolenberg? No, he went to Romeoville. Boom! <laughs> Let me tell you what, though. If Bolenbrook would not have been split up, like if Bolingbrook and Romeoville was not split, once man, you we would have been unstoppable forever, like ever and ever and ever. There was at one point in Bolingbrook, the coach was telling uh, Coach Acton was telling us we had in one year six All Americans playing that lived in Bolingbrook that were playing for different schools, right? Because they couldn't play on the same team and get they shine. All right, I had to say Sean Vandiver. All right, and his sister Claudia. Sean Vandiver was like, I remember Sean Vandiver was huge in high school. Huge. I hated that team, though. I hated them because it was like every year we were supposed to be the team, they would always come and screw us up. Kill the Ville. Kill the Ville. Hey, uh... Where is Naeem? I thought that the um, there's a person on here that I thought was um, played on that team too. Remember Larry Wise? Y'all remember Larry Wise? Man, Larry Wise is when Romeoville went downstate and they found out that fool was 25 years old. <laughs> he came from the city. I mean, he was balling. It was crazy. He was playing all type of stuff. I mean, he was doing all type of stuff. They was like, yeah, he's 22. We was like, damn! That's hilarious. Y'all know the Chinese broke into Equifax. Trump finna put him on blast for that, too. Yeah, but they did that like three years ago. Maurice Cheeks was from Chicago? He from 35th and Federal. Really? Yeah. Kind of hard to keep him off that list now that I think about it. Man, Naeem, I'm telling you, you know about Zoe Verge was bad. That bad, that boy was cold. And it's like, it was like, you know, that's like the missed potential. Like, everybody like, damn. Quinn Buckner, I'm sorry. He lost one game to Junior. And senior. So let me tell you. Ver Zoe... Zoe was on all the he would get in trouble on his recruiting visits. Like I'm be honest you the, man, I never forgive, man. That brother like the bros from Western used to come visit us and they would get slapped at seven o'clock in the morning. Like they would be man, I, I can't even tell you some of the stuff I saw. But the first time I ever saw ATM get robbed <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. I can't tell you who, but there was a world famous basketball player on a recruiting trip. I don't know. I used to play ball with a friend of mine from the West Side, uh, uh, and oh. 
he went on a trip and he said, they just didn't know how to act. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and they treat me like everything. <laughs> yeah, it just, they just didn't know what to do. <laughs> Forever. Wherever you go, whatever you do, I will be right here waiting for you. Wherever we takes, when my heart breaks, we'll be right here waiting for you. Don't you regret it? You are tuned in to the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Torch and Todd. You know what? The NBA All-Star Game is coming to Chicago this week. That's right. It's NBA All-Star Weekend. It's not one day. It's a whole week full of events. It is, though, I'm going to tell you. I tell people right now. I've been telling people that the center of the universe this weekend will be right here in Chicago, and here to talk to us about it is Miss Kara. Kara, is it Kara or Kara? Kara. Kara Bachman. She's on the line, and she is the executive director of the Chicago Sports Commission. Kara, welcome to the morning show. How are you today? I'm awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I love the enthusiasm. <laughs> well, you I have, agree. <laughs> well, let me tell you what. I am bouncing around. I am all excited because. <laughs> Uh, the NBA All-Star Game is coming back to Chicago for the first time in 25 years. Now, Kara, when I go out of town, it's like I'm a tourist and I know what to expect. Talk to me about what's going to happen when the world descends on Chicago and we become the center of the universe. Talk to me about the NBA All-Star Game and what it means to have it in Chicago. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I love your enthusiasm. And I heard in the beginning there a little woo-hoo. But um, I hopefully we'll have a lot of those this week because there'll be many moments for that. I mean, you know Chicago is the best city in the world, and now everyone gets to see that through kind of the lens of basketball. So everything from legends that are going to be flocking to the city, probably recalling many memories of playing here and opponents, some of the greatest opponents ever in the NBA from Chicago. And the NBA is doing us justice by bringing – so many events across the city. So whether it's just the key events that are happening at United Center and Wintrust Arena, um, from the celebrity game to the skills competition and slam dunk, they have a huge um, a huge event going on at Navy Pier called Crossover, which is the NBA with um, intersection of fashion and art and culture. Um, where that will be programmed for three days across um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, so that's going on. So, Kara, I guess the the thing that is pretty cool, especially like with the NBA crossover, as well as a lot of the community events, is that I was concerned that the NBA coming to Chicago, Chicagoans would become outsiders because uh, you know it's so expensive to yeah. go to the games. But it seems like the NBA has done a really good job of partnering with community-based organizations as well as creating opportunities for all Chicagoans to experience uh, All-Star Weekend. Talk to me about, like, you talk, You mentioned NBA crossover. Talk to us about that and other events that are going to be happening this week. Yeah, no, I'm glad you said that, and I'm glad you feel that way because that was something that was important to us, that when NBA brings this event to town that, yeah, we don't become tourists in our own city and that everyone has an opportunity to participate. I personally think that crossover is one of the best Opportunities because they're going to be bringing it is this fashion, art, culture, music um, event with panel discussions and different activations and games. They'll have junior NBA activities going on there all week. So there's local Chicago kids playing there, 
Um, there are kids who have come in to compete from out of town, which is super exciting for them and getting to come to Chicago. But they're also bringing players and legends there, so you can still have all those touch points and opportunities to see some of your favorite players. I'm a big D. Wade fan. I know he's going to be over there for a number of things. Um, so that that's one that's really key. There's concerts and events throughout the city. And they've also, which I think is incredible, is the commitment that they have to give, um, really financially contribute to local Chicago charities. And um, the, um, the game on Sunday will donate about a million dollars to charities. And uh, what charities will those be? So uh, through that, so uh, the captains um, selected After School Matters and Chicago Scholars. Mm. So, the, um, you know, trying to make the game pretty competitive. We all know the knock when people think maybe there's not as much defense, but we're hoping the charitable component inspires inspires the teams to go hard and uh, win as much money as they can for the charities. And I know there are so many uh, teams in the league now, and it seems like 20 years or so since the, the uh, game has been here. 25. 25, wow. I was, you guys, I think it's even longer. Really? It's like 1988. Yeah, yeah. I was just a wee one back in those days. Stop it, stop it. Okay, okay. okay. I, was I, was I wasn't born. You were born? Oh, see, that's how you make people feel bad. Yeah. I was a junior in high school. I'm going to pretend. I'm going to pretend I wasn't born. Okay, go ahead. So how do people find out all the events that are, are going on? Because it sounds like there'll be a, a ton of things to do. Yeah, so I think most trusted resource that I'm, I'm using and I'm working on the event every day is still the NBA events app that you can download, you know, Android, Google, um, iTunes, Apple, and it is, they constantly are updating it. So everything from, hey, the best way to get to this venue, um, where to enter, you know, what transportation to take, what times are things going on, who's participating, what time... Will I have the opportunity to see D Wade at crossover? You know, all those types of um, information will be or are on the app and are continued to be updated. Awesome. Now, Kara, you know, I got, so I have a very wide Facebook Live as well as listening audience. And people are saying, now, I know that there's got to be a chance for people to win some tickets or an opportunity for them to get tickets at a discounted rate. How can people participate? Like maybe uh, the Rising Stars or any of those other games that may provide a lower ticket price. Yeah, I, Rising Stars, I think, is incredible opportunity and great um, musical entertainment. Very own Chicago's very own Taylor Bennett doing the halftime show. Um, I know that tickets are still on sale for that and also with the events app that I mentioned, uh, you can check in to different places and um, you'll be entered to win tickets for events um, during All Star. Now. Uh, Kara, let me ask one more. Do you have any advice for people that are coming to Chicago? I think one on Friday or probably Thursday, we're going to make a list of things to look out for, places to go, things to do, and how to stay out of trouble. Talk to me about what you know, because you know, every there's going to be parties, etc. How do people know where to go? What's NBA sanctioned versus? Because I see an All Star logo on everything. So how do we know where to go, what to do, what are the official sanctioned events, and where, you know, where's all the good side stuff that everybody should be looking out for? <laughs> uh, so, you know, the uh, a, a group that is Chicago-based and terrific partner of ours at NBA, the National Basketball Retired Players Association, ah. and even though we all weren't born yet in 88 and we're not near retirement or anything, these are, you know, the legends of our game. Um, some of them probably younger than us still, but um, they are all coming to town, and the thing is about over 200. And National Basketball Retired Players Association organizes a number of events. Um, those are all on their page, um, and they will start off the week, I think, at Tau with um, wow. a tip-off party, and then they will have a number of events, I think almost one a night, with you know, different legends, um, different personalities that have strong ties to basketball and those are all official and sanctioned and safe and 
I'm going to go with trouble free <laughs> and just a, a good time to celebrate basketball in our city, the culture of it, the history of it, um, and, and the future of it. Now, Carrie, you mentioned the NBA events app, and I downloaded it on my phone, but we were just having a little fun with another app, and I've got to ask you, who are your top five basketball players from Chicago of all time? Okay, well, let's go with the obvious everyone's is always going to be MJ all day. No, 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 no. Got to be a Chicago local. Got to be local from Chicago. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Well, then I would say D. Wade. Okay. Uh, D. Rose. Okay, there's your cards. Give me two forwards. Oh, D. Wade. D. Rose. Well, I would have well, said Anthony Davis. Okay, you can say Anthony Davis. That's your center. Um, or you can be your forward too. I think you should vote with me. I think you should vote with me and take Ben Wilson and Mark McGuire. Because then if you take those, they'll, well, Ben Wilson won't be here, but Mark McGuire will be here. And we can catch him at his party. And all of this information that Car has been show, talking to us about, you can get it on the NBA Events app. You can go to NBAevents.com. But I'm going to tell you what. I want to send a big shout out to Chicago Sports Commission. Right, because they made it their mission. And as I keep getting these press releases, more and more Chicago organizations throughout the city are now having the opportunity to uh, participate in the NBA All-Star Weekend. So I want to thank you, Kara, and everything Chicago Sports Commission is yeah, doing. Yeah, I never heard of them before. This I've is great. Heard, this is <laughs> awesome. And, and we'll, well, thank you, guys. Appreciate your support. Thank you. And look, we look forward to talking to you and seeing you this weekend. Hey, it's the WVOA Morning Show. When we come back, we will wrap this thing up. And I'm still trying to figure out who is the top five. This is Top Chicago 1690. We'll be back. More of the Morning Show with Mays Jackson on coming up, up on the Talk of Chicago. I'm going to assume this, this is Taffy Apples for me. <laughs> For sure. For sure. All right. Bye, peace. They are working hard to fuck this over. They're about to reindict Jesse Smollett. I, I could I, I could have told you from the beginning that this whole... Once Dan Webb got involved in this, that was like the kiss of death for, the, for her. This is not going to look good for her. <coughs> Only in the sense that it's going to make this whole thing come back. Right, we're going to be reliving it. Yeah. Dan Webb don't play. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Dan oh, I'm supposed to be wrapping up. Okay, go ahead. Dan Webb is like the Secretary of State. You know how the Secretary of State, you look at him and you're like, damn, that guy dresses well. <laughs> That's what Dan Webb has become in the, uh, in the political law space. What? He dresses well? No, no, no. That when you look at them, they look so sharp. You're like, I can see why this guy would be the Secretary of State. He he looks like he could go anywhere and say anything to anybody, and they would believe. It. Yes, and Dan Webb has that in the the um, the attorney space in Illinois. Yeah, I mean he is the and when you are the boss at Winston and Strawn, which is the white shoe firm, yes, right where they hire governors. That's the big uh, Republican firm. You're a big Republican firm. You sound. They're a big Republican firm until Mayor Daley hires them. <laughs> well, Mayor Daley may have been uh, the, the leader Republican. of the Democrats, but... He was a Republican. He was a friend of the Republicans. That's well, for he sure. loved him some George Bush. Shoot. You think all those donors he had they weren't Republicans? Man, right. That's what hints Lori. Wants me to buy some stuff. She's starting to, to cook more.
Powdered sugar, a lot of butter. Inbound Herman Memorial, no yeah. traffic Hard right now. Jeans, traffic is moving way. freely and on the Bishop Ford, no major delays. I don't even know what that Inbound is. Stevenson, Tri-State to Lakeshore Drive, 51 minutes. Outbound 23. Over in the Eisenhower Route 390 to the old post office. Stop and go for you. One hour and five minutes. Outbound, 39 minutes, stop and go between Central and First Avenue. Kennedy O'Hare to downtown, looking at a 45 minute trip. Outbound, 33 minutes, and Lakeshore Drive, southbound, Hollywood to Monroe, 35 minutes. Mostly sunny today with highs in the low 30s. Tonight, down to 24, it is 28 degrees right now. That's a look at traffic and weather. I'm Jennifer Thompson. If you gotta be there at nine, you have 10 minutes. It's 8.50 on 1690 AM, WVON. The Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON, is your black history-making station. Download the iHeartRadio app and listen live wherever you go. The Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Whoa! That's right. I'm gonna wait till the midnight hour. When love comes tumbling down. Don't wait till the midnight hour. Now surround. Jelly roll you. Oh, yeah, in the midnight hour. Front. You are tuned into the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host, to all the children, Todd. You know what? It's been a good show. Uh, it was good. I'm still trying to figure out the top hey, five. I, I, I got another person uh, I didn't give you forwards. One of my forwards is Nate Sweetwater Clifton. Who is that? He went to DuSable, like my mama did. He's from Arkansas. Oh, Lord. He played it. X U! X U! They had a basketball team? Was it be, was it behind the barn? Was it behind the? Uh, it was in the barn, sir. It was in the barn. Yes. Okay. And he played uh, in the NBA as well as the Harlem Globetrotters. Ah, okay. All right, Todd. Well, that's a good one. Oh, oh you know who who's not on the list who? is uh, Ken Norman. Oh, I remember Ken Ken Norman. Oh, I remember Ken Norman. Yeah, yeah. He played. Atlanta. He played U of I too. Exactly. Right. Yep. See, Todd. I know these things. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Top five, man. Top five. Download the posterized app. Let's go to Bob. Is that Bob Israel? Israel, you're on Talk Chicago, 1690. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bobby, thanks for taking my call. How old is the president over there, President um, Stewart? Because he went way back. He about, <laughs> he about 300, man. He around here picking people. We ain't never even. I got to represent my school, man. I see. But no, he picked time. I was destroyed. I used to hear Ricky Green. I heard he was bad about it. Hurt. Yes. You know, um, I don't know you got to go with Ben Wilson. I got Ben yeah. on my list. Then y'all, I know Derrick Rose, that's a giver. I got D. Rose on the list. Oh, uh, somebody called. Got, who? Yes, sir. Who you got? Who forgot? Who we forget? Ronnie Fields, man. That makes it jump out the gym. Yeah, man, but, yeah. you know, Ronnie Fields could jump out the gym, but was he, like, he didn't even get a college scholarship? No, no, he got caught up in something, but man, he's, yeah. man, he's better than Kevin Garnett, you ask me. No, man. Well, you know what? Well, they played together. I agree with that. I remember that. I remember that because we used to watch them in Bowling Right? Yeah, we used to but, watch um, them in Bowling Tim Hardaway, and I'm out your way, man. <laughs> Tim Hardaway. <laughs> See, you got you got top seven, not five. Cross over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. You know, hey, you know who I used to like? Who didn't mention? Who people haven't mentioned who? is uh, Michael Finley. Man, Mike Finley, he had a long career. Mike was like a low key. I mean, he won here. And he won in the NBA. And he won in college. Nah, when he didn't win. Wasn't, wasn't, oh, he was he was in he the was second part, wave. He literally was part of of the new wave, actually. Right, he was like the beginning of the new. That's wave. right. Yep, 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 yep. yep. All right, um, man, I thought Donnie Kersey would call in DK. You know what? So like, we asked, you know what? We we need to do a podcast on this. 
Like, get all the old Chicago hoopers together and be like, who did we know? Like, because, again, I would have put, like, How Jim- long do you want the podcast to be? I mean, I think you could do a series. You sure? I think you could do a series on Chicago's basketball legends, and they could tell you stories. And, like, you put two, like, could you put, could you imagine doing a, 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 a series between Simeon and King? In the 80s and 90s, oh, and you talk to like Nick Anderson and, and Jamie Brandon and all Nick those. Nick Anderson, would, people would mention Nick Anderson if he shot free throws better. Man, Nick he Anderson. Was Mr. Basketball, they almost won in Orlando, they almost won in Illinois. I mean, he, he, was, Man, he, I, and he Nick, was close to everything. Let me tell you what, there was nobody back. Well, Kendall Gill. You know, I think we slept on Kendall Gill too. Because the, the Kendall Gill was a bad boy. I mean, Kendall Gill was a lottery pick. Yeah, but Kendall Gill was athletic, but he wasn't the skilled player that Nick Anderson was. Nick Anderson knew how to put the ball in the basket. That's, I mean, that's, that's one of those things. That's what basketball is. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to Michael. Michael, you're on Top Chicago. Give me a top five. Uh, good morning. D-Rose. D-Rose. Did you download the app, man? Get the app, man, because we got to win this. Go ahead. D-Rose. D-Rose. Uh... Mickey Johnson. Who? Uh, Mickey Johnson from the West Side. Mickey Johnson. Oh, that's Pat Dallas. Mickey Johnson played. Mickey Johnson mm-hmm. played for Limblom. I don't know if he was from the West Side, but he played at Limblom uh-huh. and then later played for the Bulls. Got it. Right. Cat, Cat Cassie Russell. Who? Cassie Russell. I don't know who Cassie that is. Russell. He played for Michigan too. Cassie Trouble. Russell is. Mm-hmm. He played for. He played for Crane, I believe. Okay. Uh, Anthony Davis. Okay. I got one more, right? Mm. Cause y'all naming all these suburban players. Kendall Gill played in the suburbs. Hey man, why you hating on the birds, man? I'm uh, telling you, uh, y'all he, miss, he, bo- he, y'all he, miss Trent Mace, Jackson. May said that. Trent Jackson. Okay, you know one more? Cause I got a lot of read. Come on, who you got? Chicago. Chicago. I got one more. One more. Isaiah. One more. Come on, man. D Rose. Come on, man. Give me somebody. Mike, you're going to have to go on hold because I got to do this. Hey, right. Dan Soul Food and Bakery is celebrating Black History Month with Soul Food Principles and Soul Music Dan Soul Food Bakery. Home of two of the Tuesday $6 holla. The best two-piece chicken dinner, white or dark, with your choice of two mouth-watering sides like greens, candy yams, mashed potatoes, and gravy or green beans. Plus, a piece of the best corn muffins in Chicago, hands down. Now, with your choice of beverage, Dan's Homemade Pink Lemonade will have you thirsty for another glass. Dan's Soul, Soul, Dan Soul and Bakery, 2523 West 79th Street, home of the Tuesday $6 holla, is the best choice of your pocket and your stomach. We all get busy in our lives, plan to meet up with friends on Tuesday and get a Sunday dinner for six bucks. Jeez. <laughs> now listen to WVON all day on Tuesdays to find dates and times for DJs, open mics, and live performances all during the month of February. Dan Soul Food and Bakery, 2523 West 79th Street. Call 773-737-6695. That's 773-737-6695. Bringing Black Family Back Together celebrating Black History Month. And with that four-minute read, uh, I have to now wrap up the morning show. Oh, Mike, did you get your last one? Go to Mike. Did you get your last one, Mike? See, Mike done up. Cassie Russell went to Carver. Carver. Hey, he, he's got a, a tremendous resume. Hey, man, Carver, he had to go through all, man. man he's all a big grip of Michigan. Too. He had to go through, uh, he had to go through, um, I'll be able to get there, right? Ooh-wee. All right, y'all. 1966, bro. Amen. Shoot. <laughs> Amen. For Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom. For Miss Sonia Escobar, news conductor of the Soul Plane. For my co-host, Tor Stroger. I am the host every day asking what's in it for the black people. And if you don't like it, you know what you can do? You can still tell them. May said we out of here. Peace. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation is 1690. Good Lord. Good what read Lord. was that, Ty? Huh? What read was that? Who wrote that? That was a $6 holler. <laughs> that was-